time to relive memories and a time to create new ones. It's also a time to forget the books and let 18-year-old kids act like 18-year-old kids. And it's a time to get ready for the centerpiece of homecoming, the ball game. Tonight, Big Red against the Cowboys. Why is this man smiling? Because he's Tom Osborne, Nebraska's head coach. You'd smile too with these guys, 4-0, ranked fifth in the country. After losing Heisman Trophy candidate Doug DuBose to a knee injury, Osborne turned to number six, Keith Enzone Jones. And the fastest player in Nebraska history has responded with 99 yards a game rushing and five touchdowns, including the 78-yarder. And the Huskers have made the most of Steve Taylor's passing game. Tight end Todd Milliken has five catches, four of them for touchdowns. For Oklahoma State, Pat Jones brings a very young team into Lincoln and will count on some excellent skilled people to make it a game. The best he has is Thurman Thomas, coming off knee surgery. Through four games, he has 324 yards rushing. Not bad, but not up to his standards either. Thomas had his best week of practice getting ready for Nebraska. A sold-out Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. They're here tonight to see Oklahoma State take on their Cornhuskers. The weather, in a word, is absolutely miserable. A winter storm warning in effect. 40 degrees at kickoff time, rain mixed with snow, and a strong wind out of the north, up to 30 miles an hour, which will definitely be a factor tonight. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Pat McAnally. Great to have you with us for college football on ESPN. Oklahoma State comes in here tonight, 2-2, two and two, Pat, and they're a very young football team. Well, they're young and they're small, which is a terrible combination for a coach to face. They have one returning starter on their offensive line and their front seven guys defensively. They do, however, have a very strong secondary led by All-American Mark Moore. On offense, they have Thurman Thomas. The problem is, as you know, Thomas was a Heisman Trophy candidate coming into the season. He had knee surgery, and with that young offensive line, they haven't been able to move the ball. Of course, Nebraska is exactly what you would expect from Nebraska. They are big, strong, and undefeated. Well, they're big, they're strong, and they're fast. This is the most speed they've had in years. And defensively, they're holding their opponents to 54 yards a game rushing, which is just incredible. Offensively, they have Steve Taylor, quarterback, Keith Enzone Jones at running back, and they have the speed to go outside, and of course, with that big line, they can pound it up the middle. Tim Brando is working the sidelines for us tonight. There's one thing guaranteed. If Tim Brando's down on the sidelines, it's raining. Tim? Yeah, but it's it's what homecoming is all about. You got to deal with the elements, Mike. There's no question, though, that the elements tonight in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln could play a big factor. This carpet here is about two years old, and when it rains, it gets slippery when it's wet in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, to combat that, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State have two different tacks. One, the regular shoe, and number two, and this will be the shoe they use, the rain shoe. Now, you can see the difference there. The cleats are a much tighter here and will help with the traction. They also used a squeegee earlier on the carpet, but I should mention that there was a JV game played here yesterday. It had not rained nearly as much, and players were slippering all over the place. So three things to watch tonight. The cold, the corn huskers, and the cowboys right here on CFA Football on ESPN. Live CFA Football on ESPN is being brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste and less spilling beer. Who says you can't have it all? By Dickies, they're America's favorite work clothes, but who says you have to work in them? By The Atlantic, we can make a difference. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Oklahoma State will kick off to start the ball game in a strange turn of events. Nebraska won the toss. Oklahoma State, after Nebraska deferred, Oklahoma State had the option. They took the goal to our left because they will be with that 30-mile-an-hour wind here in the first quarter. So Nebraska will get the football to start the ball game. They will also have the option when we start the second half. 
Joey O'Donnell will kick off for the underdog Cowboys. Terry Rogers, number 20. Dana Brinson, number 33, are deep to receive. And we are set to go before a sellout crowd of 73,650. The 146th consecutive sellout here in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Because of the wind, they're using the holder. And with the wind, he drives it to Brinson at the two. Brinson has a seed. 40. Midfield. Driven out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Mark Moore. The All-American safety saved the touchdown and a 58-yard kickoff return for Dana Brinson. Well, Dana Brinson's the second fastest guy on this team. He's 4.39 in the 40. If he gets out in the open field, he's gonna get it's gonna be big trouble for the other team. It's just a nice deep kick, good height. Remember, that was with the win. Now he'll just cut off his blockers and it's just a big scene. Now it's just a matter of speed. Again, with the move outside, break that tackle. This is a game-saving tackle here. It would have been a team. Nebraska, first and 10 at the Oklahoma State 40-yard line. They'll go on the option with Taylor. And Taylor dragged down at the 40-yard line by Leonard Jackson, the big right tackle, who leads this team with 44 tackles. Well, that's very deflating. Uh, Oklahoma State, there's Steve Taylor right there, quarterback. But anyway, I was saying Oklahoma State decided to go on defense. They kicked the ball off. They have a 58-yard kickoff return. That's the worst thing that can happen to a team right there. They're down right now. Nebraska second and 10. Taylor with Heibel 48 and Jones number six. This is Jones, and he'll lose two yards. Met at the line of scrimmage and behind it by Sim Drain number 53. Take a look at that Nebraska offense. Behind quarterback Steve Taylor, you have Keith Jones, the eye back, the star runner since Doug Dubose had knee surgery. The receivers don't get much work, but they make the most of their chances. The offensive line may be the best five as a group that the Huskers have had in a long, long time. Third down and 11 yards to go as the ball is spotted just shy of the 42. And the officials will stop play. And it's Sim Drain, number 53. He may have some kind of an equipment problem. He is really upset. I think he lost a contact lens. Found it, but he's got to come off the field or they'll be charged with a timeout. That Oklahoma State defense, very, very young. As a matter of fact, only one starter back in the front seven. Shaw is the big play man. Had a dislocated shoulder two weeks ago. Both the linebackers are freshmen. They're improving each week. The secondary is terrific. With All-American Mark Moore, he moves from the free safety to the corner because of an injury in that secondary, but it's the strength of the Oklahoma State defense, and they have Nebraska where they want them right now in a third and long situation. And back to throw is Taylor. Plenty of time to throw. Guns it near sideline and throws complete. And it's going to be a first down. The pass caught by Jason Gamble. Donnie Brown on the tackle. And Taylor just set in the pocket. What they did on that play was they put Keith Jones, the, the eye back, in the slot left. He ran up the sidelines and took the safety in the corner with him. And then Gamble just ran a hook right into the, the seam of the zone. It's a nice toss. This was the one element that in the past was sometimes missing from Nebraska, the ability to throw the ball very well. They have it this year. First and 10 at the 24. This is Jones on the toss. Gets outside. Has about seven yards down to the 18-yard line. Pulled down again by Leonard Jackson, number 84, the right tackle out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Osborne on the sideline. Great coaching job he's done. 131 wins, only 30 losses, and two ties. Now in his 14th year. What an incredible record. He has the third best active winning percentage in college football. Just a hair behind Joe Paterno, who is number two. Second down and four for the Huskers. Two tight ends in the ball game. Power setup. They give it to Jones, and Jones drilled, nailed in the backfield. He didn't have a chance. Ball carried by Jones. Tackle by 92, Robert Final High score, back Keith Jones, number six, had no chance on this play. Guy came in unblocked and just nails him as soon as he gets the ball. This is how you have turnovers on hits like that. He did a good job just holding on to that ball. He went right back 
on the ground. The big hit was by Robert Nunn, the reserve linebacker who came in for Sim Drain, the young man who came out because he lost a contact lens, and Nunn at 227 really put the hit on Jones. Third and three right now for Nebraska with the first scoring threat of the ball game. Oklahoma State may have jumped off sides. Taylor on the roll. Throws and overthrows. The intended receiver is tight end Todd Milliken. And now we'll check the flag. It looked like Oklahoma State had jumped off sides. We'll check to see whether they were drawn off side. And a tough break for the Cowboys. They had held on third down. And now Nebraska will get the automatic first. Right tackle, Pat right Jones tackle. on the sideline. He's the gentleman over there with all the courage, the one without the hat. Well, Oklahoma State cannot make mistakes like this. They give them a first down. They have a big kickoff return against them. Offside on the defense. First down. When you're, when you're playing a team as strong as Nebraska, you've got to play flawlessly on special teams, and you just can't make mistakes like that on defense. It's an automatic first down for Nebraska. They're at the Oklahoma State 12-yard line, and Pat Jones told us yesterday the one thing his defense is going to be doing is slanting, skipping around, doing every stunt imaginable. They know they can't line up man for man against a huge Nebraska offensive line. Option. Taylor gets inside the 10 yard line. Brought down by David Bailey, number 98, the left tackle. There's the left hand of Steve Taylor, and why is that important? Well, it'll affect their uh, option game. He really is having trouble. We talked to the coaches yesterday. He can't pitch that ball when they go to the left. He dislocated it last week, and uh, that changes their running game because they can really only run the option out of the right since he's right handed. He can't pitch it left handed. Dislocated finger on the left hand. So Oklahoma State there really doesn't have to worry about the option as on this play to the wide side of the field on second and seven. Normally that's when they run the action that way. To the one yard line goes fullback Micah Heibel. It'll be another Nebraska first down. Heibel a 220 pound junior out of Lincoln Nebraska. He is the backup fullback to Ken Kalen who was out with an injury. Well, let's watch that big offensive line of Nebraska just blow people back. Then the fullback, Micah, just takes the ball. Heibel, big, strong kid. Plenty of room to run there. They need the option. McCormick and Walter. Walter on the right side are very strong, and they, they uh, cut off the defenders on that play and stop the pursuit. First and goal, Nebraska. Jones. Touchdown, Nebraska. the tradition here in Nebraska they let the balloons go after the first score usually it doesn't take long and this time it didn't take long 10 minutes 37 seconds to go in the quarter and the Huskers are on the board 6-0 and Dale Klein will try to make it seven Klein who had a string of 60 straight point afters broken earlier this year drills it through and it's 7-0 Huskers Okay, again, the big, strong offensive line right over the right guard and center gap, and he'll just dive right in. That's why they call him end zone Jones. He gets in when he gets close. We have a timeout on the field here in Lincoln. 10.37 to go, first quarter. 7-0 Nebraska. Nebraska takes the opening kickoff and drives for a touchdown to lead 7-0 here in the first quarter. Oklahoma State will get the football. For the first time, Klein, who made the extra point, will kick it away to Bobby Riley, number one, and Barry Sanders, number 21. He's at the far side, and Sanders has not returned to kickoff this year. Riley has returned 197 yards for a touchdown. Riley at the 10. And only gets back to the 24, a 14-yard kickoff return for Oklahoma State. Scoring drive, 40 yards, consumed four minutes and 23 seconds, eight plays, and Jones capped it off with that one-yard dive. And there is Keith Enzone Jones. You got a nickname like that, you better be able to play or your teammates rag you something awful. Well, the key to that drive, Mike, was that uh, third and 12. Nebraska showed they have the ability to throw the ball, and that was into the wind, and Steve Taylor delivered a bullet. Sure was. Mike Gundy, a true freshman, number 12, leads them out at quarterback. And keep a good eye on Thurman Thomas. Right now, they have only one back in the backfield. 
And that's Nash. And Nash goes absolutely nowhere. Here's freshman quarterback Mike Gundy starting his second straight game in place of the struggling Ronnie Williams behind him, Thurman Thomas, who has not had a 100-yard game this year. The receivers are exciting, especially Hartley Dykes. The line has only one starter from a year ago, Doug Meacham. The, uh, the rest are very inexperienced. Second and call it nine for Oklahoma State. The ball at the 25-yard line. And the officials now mark it up near the 26. And it must be hard for Mike Gundy to believe this. Uh, last year, he was Oklahoma State Player of the Year in high school. Now he's playing against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That's right. He came off the bench two games ago. I'll give it to Thurman Thomas. And Thomas gains maybe a yard. The tackle by Chris Spockman, big number 76, and Kevin Parsons, number 35, the linebacker. Nebraska's defense, number three in the country against the run. Middle guard Danny Noonan, a truly great player in the middle of that line. The linebackers are good with Munford coming back from major knee surgery. A remarkable recovery. The secondary is solid. Siebler's interception saved the South Carolina game a week ago. So it's third and eight. Just the situation that Mike Gundy, the freshman quarterback, did not want to be in. A position where he had to throw the football. He'll be throwing out of the eye, and he would like to throw it to Hartley Dykes, who is flanked to the top of the screen. Draw to Thomas. Thomas, a little tentative coming up the middle, and he's slapped down by Danny Newman in the middle yard, number 95. Let's watch number 95, Danny Noonan. He's preseason All-America, right in the middle of your screen. He gets double team. He's going to play right off it and make the play. And that's why he's an All-America candidate. Outstanding play. They'll have to punt it away. And deep to receive Dana Brinson and Rod Smith. Kerry Cooper, who has averaged a little over 39 yards a kick, will punt with the win. Taken by Smith. Midfield, he's got a chance. Special teams again. Only Touchdown. the kicker to beat. Touchdown, Nebraska. 63 yards. Scores twice quickly. Klein on for the point after. It's through. And Nebraska, in less than seven minutes, has two touchdowns. And Rod Smith, who had averaged 10.7 a return, really broke this one. Well, it's a real low snap. Or a low, a low punt. He's the up man, actually. Picks it off alertly. And now, as soon as he breaks this seam, he'll have some nice downfield blocks. All clean, by the way. And this will be a touchdown. He just takes off. That's two big plays by the return teams from Nebraska. And that's why they were leading 14-0 right now. I'll tell you what, Pat, in a replay, you saw one white shirt the entire way. They really wiped them out. Timeout on the field, first quarter. It's the Huskers by 14. There's Pat Jones on the Oklahoma State sideline. He has to find a way to circle the wagons. His team down 14-0, and they've only had one offensive possession. Well, you work so hard, Don, your offensive and defensive game plans, and you, you know, you just assume that your special teams are going to carry their own weight. There's just no way to prepare for uh, two returns like those, mentally anyway. Trying to kick it away to Riley and Sanders. Riley number one, Sanders 21 to the far side. They want to get the ball to Bobby Riley. His first opportunity tonight, he had a 14-yard return, but he is a game breaker. High floating kick into the wind, Riley at the 12. Guts outside and chased out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Brian Davis downfield on special teams to run him out and a 15 yard return. You know, Mike, talking about that punt return again, uh, it was an alert play by Rod Smith coming up. He was a short man and catching that punt. It was with the wind and he hit it low, so it was like a bullet. It got there so fast that they didn't have time to cover it, and that's why he broke it for the touchdown. Eight minutes, 12 seconds to go. Tough position for Mike Gundy to find his, his a situation like this. Down 14-0, first quarter. Yeah. 
Gundy brings him out with wide receivers right and left and two tight ends. That is Curtis Looper, the man in motion. And they'll give it to Thomas up the middle of the 31-yard line. Thomas got off the ball well that time. Lee Jones, number 98, and Mark Munford, number 41, on the stop for Nebraska, a team that is giving up only 54 yards a game on the ground. And when you can shut down other people's running game like that, you're going to win a lot of ball game. Puts them third in the country, by the way. Second down, seven. Gundy to throw, the quick pass to Hartley Dykes. He went up with one hand and couldn't hold it. Then he's thrown to the ground by Brian Davis after the play. Dykes at 6-4 can go up and get it, but he couldn't hold that one. Well, this advantage of being 6'4 as a wide receiver, he almost pulls this ball down. Very high, he'll stick up one hand in the wind. Look at this, he almost comes down with it. He'll make some catches before the night is over. He's a big-time receiver. Big and fast. Drafted by the Phillies as a pitcher, spent most of his freshman year on the injured list. Third and seven for the Cowboys. Single back, two tight ends and two wide receivers. Now they put Thomas off to the side and Gundy to throw. Pressure throws over the middle, complete to Hartley Dykes. And Dykes at the 47-yard line. Brian Siegler makes the stop, but Gundy had that one on the mark. Well, as I said a second ago, Hartley Dykes is going to catch some balls in this game. They threw for 363 yards last year against Nebraska. Just going to be a post pattern. Again, when you're six foot four, these are easier throws. And if it's, you're throwing to a short guy, right in the numbers, and he pulls it down. But there is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. And both teams have gone back to it, an indication that it was against Oklahoma State. But they are talking to the Cowboys, giving them the option, apparently. They had enough for the first down on the pass completion. Thurman Thomas having the options explained to him. And they will mark off a 15-yarder. The passer on the defense gets declined. It'll be first down. Roughing the passer call as Gundy got it late. Pretty good throw for being hit late, wasn't it? That must have been real late. Tom Osborne, who has never lost to Oklahoma State. Of course, there are a lot of folks he hasn't lost to. That's for sure. Quite a record. First and 10, Oklahoma State. The Cowboys needed a break, and they've got one at their own 47. They'll go out of the eye this time. Thomas, straight up the middle, driving to midfield. Stopped by the middle of that Nebraska defense. Parsons and Munford in there right now. Let's check in with Larry Burnett for a scoreboard update. Larry? All right, they've got a good one going on in Tallahassee, Florida State, and Tulane. Second quarter. Terrence Jones, the uh, man with the ball for Tulane, he fakes the handoff, throws over the middle, and it's picked off by Felton Hayes. He takes it right, gets a few good blocks, and dives into the end zone for the touchdown. That made it 14 to nothing. It's now 14 to six, Florida State in the second. Thank you, Larry, and that's our score here. Nebraska 14, Oklahoma State nothing on a miserable night for football at homecoming in Lincoln, Nebraska. Second and seven right now. Thomas is the eye back, and Thurman Thomas gets the ball up the middle. And it was Chris Spockman, number 76, that slowed his progress, and then Danny Noonan, number 95, planted him along with Mark Munford, 41. Well, Danny Noonan doesn't always have to make a tackle. He's so big in there. He's 32 pounds heavier than Wilkins, the center for Oklahoma State. He's just going to take up a lot of space here, and the rest of the defensive line does a job with him. They're not going to be able to move the ball up the gut. They're going to have to throw the ball, and they have more than Hart Lee Dykes, a receiver. Bobby Riley last year had five catches for 131 yards against Nebraska, so they can go to either wide receiver. Thurman Thomas, five carries, eight yards so far. He has yet to break 100 this season. Coming off the effects of knee surgery. The option, the pitch to Thomas. Got to the Nebraska 39-yard line. Driven out of bounds there by Munford. Thomas had a great week of practice. Pat Jones was very upbeat about him yesterday, saying he was making the cuts a little stronger than he had before. Well, I think the key there is that uh, he's got to hope that his offensive line is developing. They played four games together now. They only had one man coming back, and I don't care who you are as a running back, you've got to have some room to run. I don't care if your knee's healthy or not, and I think uh, I think they've improved. It's maybe a little tough to be critical of him. He's still averaging 81 yards a game. <laughs> a lot of people give anything to have a guy averaging 81 yards a game. 
First and 10 Oklahoma State. Their second possession and a pretty good drive. They've reached the big red 38 yard line. Thomas on the sweep. Chance to get outside. Riley out there trying to block for him. And it was Charlie Fryer. And Brian Siegler out there making the stop. Fryer at right corner, the cousin of former All American Irving Fryer. Thomas showed some good speed there. He had number 91, uh, Tony Holloway. It's a very fast defensive end. He's only really a linebacker. He's 4.6 in the 40, and he uh, he ran right away from him on that play, and he was right on his tail. So I think Thomas is ready for a good game, but they're going to have to throw the ball downfield to stay in this thing. Game of five, second and five. They have that option kind of offense in there because Mike Gundy, the freshman quarterback, can run it. Gundy gives off this time up the middle to Garrett Limbrick, his fullback. And Limbrick didn't get much in the middle of that Nebraska defensive line. Spockman down there again. Let's go to Tim Brando on the sideline, Tim. Mike, both you and Pat have touched on Thurman Thomas's knee problem. He came into the season a legitimate Heisman candidate. He is wearing an anterior cruciate, which many offensive linemen generally wear. This is to protect the tibia and keep from any more injuries taking place with any respect to the knee. And that is always something for all the coaches to be very concerned with, particularly with Thomas. Big play here, third and three. Out of the eye, they'll give it to Thomas. Stop short, gang tackle. There's seven red jerseys in there. I think there were 10, Mike. <laughs> Could have been. The off corner was the only guy I didn't see on the file. So it's gonna be fourth down, and now is Pat Jones gonna go with a field goal attempt. Speaking about those knee braces that uh, Timmy showed there on the sideline, I think as football progresses the next couple of years, you're going to see more and more people wearing those. This is Broderick Thomas being attended to. Those knee braces are about the uh, best idea to come along since helmets, I think. Well, I've seen Anthony Munoz come to the sidelines uh, with the Bengals with uh, the metal actually torn. Yeah. And what would that have done to a knee ligament? Here is Brad Dennis, the young man who in high school Number in 13, Villa Park, California, broke all of Pat McAnally's records. The question was, why did it take so long? Uh, thanks a lot, Mike. They all fall sometime. Dennis will try from 49. His long this year is 47. Line drive, and it's going to be short. He didn't get it all. It's a tough night to kick a football. It gets very hard when it's this cold, even with the wind. So Oklahoma State comes up empty. Well, this might have been roughing. He'll go down after he kicks this ball. He did not hit it well. Well, he got hooked a little bit, and then he went right down. Yeah, I'll tell you, you're right, Mike. When it's cold, it's hard to kick. Timeout, 3.59 to go in the quarter. Still Nebraska by 14. Our score here, 14-0, and ESPN's live presentation of CFA football continues next Saturday when Texas hosts Arkansas. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock Eastern. Larry and Bino with the Mercury College football scoreboard show. Nebraska with, with the football, and they go up the middle. They get the ball to the 33-yard line. Again, be with us next Saturday night when we'll have Texas and Arkansas, one of the fine rivalries in the Southwest. Both teams coming off losses today. Texas losing big. Arkansas lost a tough game against Texas Tech. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock with Larry and Bino and the Mercury College football scoreboard show. And then 7.30, we'll be on the air live from Austin, Texas. Second and nine. Timeout, Nebraska. And Nebraska will call a timeout. We'll take a break here in Lincoln where Nebraska is leading Oklahoma State 14-0. Some of the fans here in Lincoln, Nebraska, more than 73,650 of them. That's the capacity here at Memorial Stadium. But there's more here for homecoming. Taylor. Wide open tight end. He's got him. That's Milliken. Midfield driven out of bounds by All-American Mark Moore. From Taylor to... Well, this is what uh, Nebraska is doing so oh, so well this year. Oh. oh, we have an injury here. Oklahoma State players is down. We can't see the number right now. We'll check it for you. And it's number 66, Reggie Christian, who's the nose guard on the backup uh, second line unit. Well, they expected to play him a lot tonight. They yeah. told us that. He's a good player. They can ill afford to lose another defensive lineman. They're so thin there right now. Pat told you earlier, uh, only one of the front seven comes back as a starter for uh, Oklahoma State. And he was only a part-time starter That's at the right. end of the season, so they're uh, 
It's ironic too because they have so much strength in their secondary. They truly have one of the best secondaries in the country. Tending to the uh, the training staff, attending to the injured player. Nebraska oh. is one of those teams, uh, Pat, that does not make mistakes. <laughs> That's unbelievable. It's been uh, 22 years since they've allowed a punt return for a touchdown. Eight years for kickoff. Or an interception uh, eight, seven years it's just uh, that's top-notch football and that's why they win so many games you know people it's almost boring because they just don't make mistakes Christian right. up able to run off under his own steam that's always good to see and the way he's running off the field we should uh, see some more from the big number 66 before the night is over well, I was gonna say about the passing game for Nebraska they've been very effective this year for instance with Todd Milliken he's only, he only has five catches it's, but it's a 30-yard average and uh, four touchdowns out of those five catches and Keith Jones, the eye back in motion. They'll run out of a different set this time. Give it off to Dana Brinson, the wing back, and Brinson driven out of bounds by Moore. And Moore runs into the wrong sideline. If you're going to fight with somebody, uh, you want to go where there's more white jerseys than red. There's a lot of big red jerseys yeah. over there. Moore playing corner tonight because of an injury. He's the All-American free safety. He had been an all-big eight cornerback, and he's back to that position because of uh, Demise Williams being hurt. Now, this is not the optimum place to have a late hit or a hassle on the sidelines. Now, wait till you see all these, uh, the red envelop, the white, the one white jersey. Yeah, this is, well, again, he's got some comrades with him. Not enough, though. Second and six, Nebraska. Balls to the 46-yard line. Give it to the fullback, Micah Heibel, who gets to the 43. Let's check in with Larry Burnett for a scoreboard update. Larry? Our story here is 14-0. Nebraska with the lead and the football at the Oklahoma State 43-yard line. Heibel has carried three times for 12 yards. He's in, starting in place with the injured Ken Kalen at fullback. Nebraska has survived several injuries. They have so much depth. Out of the eye this time. Taylor on the option still has the ball. Plenty of room to run. Taylor driven out of bounds to the 30-yard line by strong safety Mike Hudson, number 10. But he's got the first down. Well, Steve Taylor's averaging uh, 5.6 a, a carry this year, 53 for 298. And this is why. He'll just run the option again to the right. His hand's healthier, so he has the option to pitch it. He'll just read Heibel. Nice block by Heibel, and he'll go outside. He just adds so much speed to this team, and, and they need that at quarterback. Welton, number 69, right there, right tackle. They think he may be the best to ever play that position here. Quarterback just finds the hole. Walter, the right tackle, and Parker, the left guard, uh, met each other in the state high school wrestling championship. Parker won. These guys are both very, very strong. Back to throw. Taylor under pressure, trying to get away from Drain. Throws downfield. Intercepted and then dropped by Mike Hudson. Hudson had it right in his hands and couldn't hold it at the two. Give some credit to Sim Drain, the middle linebacker, put some pressure on Taylor and made him throw running to his left. Right now, this uh, again, uh, you'll see, you'll see Keith Jones. He's got some speed. He'll elude this tackle. And this is just a, a poor pass, and he's absolutely Steve Taylor throws his ball. Should have been intercepted. And Oklahoma State needs these plays right in his hands. They've got to come down with those. Instead, it's a dropped interception, and Nebraska's got the ball going on third down. Second down now. Nebraska at the 20, make it at the 30-yard line. Second and 10. The one remaining back is Heibel, and he'll get the football. Still on his feet, driving forward to the 25-yard line. And he ran right over Ricky Shaw, number 97, the young man who's coming off a shoulder injury. Now, how cold do you think it is? It's under 40 degrees. The wind chill must be around 15. And they should not do that. That is ridiculous. So I'll tell you, when we played in the AFC Championship game, 59 below zero, we had a fan die doing that. Particularly after you're drinking. Particularly after drinking, you, you don't feel the cold and you can die. So don't do that if you ever see it and if you're a fan in a cold stadium. Please. Good morning, don't do that at home. Yeah. These guys are professionals. Yeah. Third and five. There's a blitz. And they may have gotten there early. They brought both backers on that play. Oklahoma State will have to gamble on defense. Pat Jones knows that. You line up playing man-to-man -man with Nebraska, you get your hat handed to you. Procedure penalty will be called against the Huskers. Apparently somebody moved as they showed the blitz. 
Earlier on this drive, Nebraska took a timeout. Uh, Steve Taylor was a little confused when he went up to the line of scrimmage. And what uh, Oklahoma Kevin State... False start, start on the offense. Oh. Somebody did move. Oklahoma State needs to move their fronts around. They need to confuse the offensive line as well as blitz. And they don't want to blitz, but uh, Nebraska's moving the ball too well, and they're going to have to gamble starting right now. So it's back to third and ten after the penalty. And Taylor leads them out. Eyeball the fullback. Jones goes to a wing. Here they come again. Comes the Both blitz. Backers. They picked it up beautifully, and Taylor has all day Pick. to throw. Intercepted. It's picked off by Jerry Deckard, number 47, his third interception of the season. And that was not a good throw by Steve Taylor, who had all day to throw it. Well, they tried to go to Todd Milliken again, number 43, for tight end. He's been so effective this year. But Jerry Deckard, number 47, for Oklahoma State, very quick. He's 4'6". He plays defensive line, but he's really a linebacker type, a drop. And that's a nice catch. They need plays like that. They have to get the turnovers when they have the opportunities. Big play right there. If Deckard could have kept his feet, he might have been able to run that one back. He has an 82-yard interception return already this year. Big break for the Cowboys. They had the ball at their own 26, first and 10. Taylor to throw. Hartley Dykes couldn't hold it. Covered very well by Charlie Fryer, but the pass was there. Fryer got a hand in just as the ball arrived. One thing they're going to do with uh, Mike Gundy today is they're going to go a lot of three, five-step drops like that. Quick throws to offset the, the young line and the strong defensive line of Nebraska. And that's exactly the type of throws they need to do. Hit those fast receivers, let them catch the ball in stride, break some tackles, and maybe get some big plays. They can't afford to have those sacks. Gundy passing right now, one out of three, 15 yards. Thomas, eight carries, 23 yards. 1.23 to go first quarter, second and 10 for Oklahoma State, their own 26-yard line, down 14-0. Nebraska showing a three-man rush. They'll give it to Thurman Thomas, and Thomas wrapped up by Chris Spockman again, who has been all over the field in the first quarter. Tackle ran by 76, Chris Spockman, 83, Grant Tyre. Well, Thurman Thomas, again, no matter how talented you are, if you don't have any room to run, you're not going to get many yards. Chris Bachman just makes a great play right here. He's in the backfield and pulls him down. He's a two-year starter. And, you know, last year he had two interceptions for touchdowns, which probably is a record in the NCAA for defensive probably linemen. Is. He's excellent against the run. A very, very quick and 265 pounds, so it's third and 12. And Gundy goes back to throw. Has time and wants it all to Riley. And Riley made the catch. What a catch by Bobby Riley. Double team, and he went up and got it. It's well, only 5-9. Oh, that was unbelievable. Well, it's nice when a quarterback has a receiver come up, go up and get a ball like this. Bobby Riley, again, he had five catches for 131 last year against Nebraska, and he shows you why right here, right between two guys. Unbelievable. Timing, he's up above him. He's only 5-9. He out jumps him, and he comes down with the ball. Brian Davis at 6-2. And Brian Siegler at six feet, and they couldn't stop the little guy out of Stroud, Oklahoma, from getting it. Gundy on the option, gets to the 35-yard line. Stacked up there, Kevin Parsons, number 35, the first man in to hit him, along with Brian Davis, 32. I think plays like that give such a lift to a team and to a young quarterback like Mike Gundy. It really means a lot. There's Deckard on the sideline, a young man with his third interception. Clock running down, and Oklahoma State going with the win in the first quarter is not going to get another playoff as time expires with Nebraska in the driver's seat, but Oklahoma State driving. Our score here in Lincoln, Nebraska, after a quarter of college football, 14-0 Huskers. Yes. Oklahoma State down 14-0 in Nebraska territory for the second time in the first half. They have the ball at the 35. It's a second and six situation for freshman quarterback Mike Gundy. He'll run the option, lost it, got it back. Had it knocked out of his hands by Brad Tyra, number 83, the son of the former great Jim Tyra. Yeah, he almost actually got this ball as a handoff. This option was well set up. If he could have uh, held on to the ball and got this pitch out to Thomas, he might have had some yardage. But as you can see, Tyra came in and almost took that ball right out of his hands. It's a good thing he fell on top of it. But that's the way to stop that option. you got to put a guy on the quarterback in a hurry. Don't give him the option to run and pitch it. Tyra's dad had uh, an untimely death. Great player for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Back to throw and complete to Hartley Dykes, and then he lost the ball, and they'll rule it incomplete. Dykes was out there, but Tony Holloway dropped off from the right end spot and was right with him. Gundy had the ball there. Hartley Dykes is the inside man on this, right in the slot on the right of your screen. He's going to run a quick out pattern, a little pivot, and he reads the defense. Holloway makes a nice play, very fast. Again, these aren't true defensive ends. Uh, they're almost linebacker types. They can cover the field and put a pass rush on. Yeah, he almost caught this ball, but in, in actuality, it wouldn't have mattered. He was about five yards short of the first down. That's not the pattern you want to run on third and nine. But another Oklahoma State player is down. And it looks like Mike Wolf, the left tackle. Sophomore, 6'5", 263 pounds. And they're looking at his ankle. Right now, we've got a scoreboard update from Larry Burnett. 17 for nine. Larry, thanks very much. Still attending to Mike Wolf, the injured Oklahoma State Cowboy. And Oklahoma State will be facing a fourth and seven right now. And Pat, if you were head coach Pat Jones with fourth and seven at the 36 yard line, down 14 nothing against the win. Uh, we wonder what you do. We'll ask you that question when we come back. Right now, there's a timeout on the field. 14 17 to go in the first half. Nebraska early second quarter and Mike Wolf still down for Oklahoma State the injured player and they are bringing a stretcher out on the field boy you hate to see this well it's a shame they're very high in Mike Wolf uh, he's one of four starting sophomores in that offensive line we alluded to how young they really are and uh, they have a number of sophomores and freshmen throughout the lineup you, you know you hate to see these young kids get hurt it looks like uh, an ankle there that doesn't look you know when you have to carry him off like that it could be serious back to my question uh, you're facing a fourth and seven from the 36 yard line into a strong wind yeah, I guess you have three options you can go for it try a strong a long field goal into the wind or you can punt it well they're not going to try a field goal he didn't make a 49 yarder with the wind so I'd say that uh, I'd have to punt this ball I got to be honest with you I hate to be conservative and I let's go down to Tim Brando on the sideline he can tell us more about the injury to Mike Wolf Tim a wolf is headed put in a splint as you can well tell they're carrying him off the field now Jeff Fair the trainer for Oklahoma State getting some assistance from George Sullivan there's some concern about a break on that left leg right now and we should also mention that Reggie Christian who was earlier injured had a left knee twist and in that twist it was a case where that knee brace really perhaps may have saved a far greater injury. So we've already seen that particular device come to the forefront. And you can tell now that the fans here in Nebraska are very hospitable as they give uh, Mike Wolf an ovation as he uh, is being carried off the field. Well, that's an excellent point on that knee brace, Timmy. Uh, there's no question that they are saving injuries and they should be worn prophylactically as a preventative measure. And again, you'll see more and more running backs, not just offensive linemen wear them from now on. In most uh, professional teams, they are mandatory now. And they will go with Pat McAnally's advice and punt the ball. Dana Brinson is deep to receive. Coach McAnally, please. Yes. When you're right, it's Coach McAnally. <laughs> when I'm wrong, I'm a broadcaster. When you're wrong, it's former punter McAnally. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is an advantage, actually. Kicking into the wind from this distance really helps a punter. He should be able to stop this ball inside the 10. Cooper into about a 30 mile an hour wind if he gets it up at all it's really going to hang and he does get it up and the wind pushes it back it's at the 10 and out of bounds and there may be a roughing the kicker call flag down at the 47 yard line after a 26 yard punt but a good one and it is a roughing call against Nebraska it's an unusual error for the Cornhuskers they usually don't make plays like this and no reason really to go for punt block in that situation. I agree. I think uh, you let a punter just, uh, you can't let him stand and kick it all day, but at the same time, they, they knew that uh, they were going to get the ball. That's uh, that's just like a turnover. You know, the thing is that, that, again, we've had this a number of weeks right in a row. You'll see it again. This ball is going to be blocked. All right, he's going to try to block this punt, but he comes straight into the punter. I don't know how many times I can say the only way to block it is when you dive across. You don't want to run into the punter. Go straight ahead. That's what generally happens. You don't get the ball, and you do get the punter, just like a turnover. First down for Oklahoma State. Looks like Danny Noonan, the nose guard, one of the few times you're going to see him make a mistake. He barely hit Kerry Cooper, but uh, Cooper went down like he was hit by a cannon. There, there are no barelys when you're punting a ball. <laughs> if you get hit and you go down, that's a penalty. Uh-huh. 
take a look at the uh, statistics in the first quarter. And the return yards are the thing that stands out for Nebraska. 121 yards in return yards. Otherwise, it's uh, relatively even. Well, set Oklahoma up, State even with a slight lead. Well, it set up the first score, and it gave him the second score. So it's fourth and two after the penalty, and Oklahoma State will now disdain the punt, and they'll go for it. I think this is a great call by Pat Jones from the 31-yard line. I think you have to try it. Thurman Thomas, the deep man in the eye. Gundy calling signals, runs the option. Dives to the 30. He didn't make it. Could have pitched that ball. Neil Smith, number 99, the man who stopped him. And Gundy comes up a yard shy. Well, Neil Smith, 99, is a big play player for them. He's very quick. He's got a, they say he's got an arm span of seven foot one inches, and he uses it all on this play. He's going to pull down Gundy short of the first down. It came from the offside. That's great quickness. That's a heck of a play to come from the opposite side and pull the guy down for a one-yard gain. Hey, when they go to the second string here in Nebraska, it's not substituting. They just reload. <laughs> That's a great call. First and 10. Huskers, their own 30. Jones, the deep man in the eye, and he'll get it on the toss. Got away from Sim Drain, got to the 36, upended over there. Larry Burnett has a scoreboard update for us from Bristol. Larry? And the game in Baton Rouge. Well, we saw Harvey Williams earlier in the year. He is going to be a truly outstanding player for a long time in Baton Rouge. They go up the middle of the fullback. Heibel crosses the 45 to about the 46-yard line. It'll be a first down. Nebraska, Jerry Deckard made the tackle. Well, that's what we... Yeah, it's definitely cold. Everybody's wearing gloves down there. But that's what we talked about earlier, uh, Mike. They can, they can go outside with Jones or with Taylor, the quarterback, and they go inside with Micah Heibel. They're so strong in that front line. Their offensive line so big and strong, they can run the ball up the middle. Here they go with a running game again. Taylor on the option. This time he won't get much. 47-yard line is where they'll mark it down. David Bailey, the big left tackle, was the man who will get credit for that stop. So it's second and eight. Taylor, the best quarterback Nebraska's had since Turner Gill, and Bobby Bowden, the head coach of Florida State, said he didn't see much difference. The, the young man just destroyed Florida State. 130 yards rushing, 139 yards passing. He accounted for four touchdowns. Those are Turner Gill type numbers. Taylor under pressure this time. Gets away, throws back. Interception, touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown. Oklahoma State is going to score on this one. What oh. a dangerous pass. Oh. Picked off by Jerry Deckard, his second touchdown return this Unbelievable. year. And he almost had one earlier if he kept his balance. And the small crowd of Oklahoma State partisans really enjoy this one as Deckard has his fourth interception of the season, his second for a touchdown, and Steve Taylor probably wanted that one back the minute he let it go. Brad Dennis will come on for the point after. And has it. And Oklahoma State has cut the lead in half. Well, this is he's Steve Taylor's going to roll right. He uses his speed to set up. They're setting up a screen, a, a real delayed, long, long delayed screen. The problem is Jerry Deckard sniffs it out. He's the only one over there. But this ball is about 50 yards in the air by the time he gets to it. He picks it off, and it was a touchdown. He is a big play player. He is not your typical defensive end. He's all over the field. The great defensive play by Deckard and a 45-yard interception return makes it Nebraska 14, Oklahoma State 7. Business. 14 to 7, there is Jerry Deckard on the sideline. He has been the star tonight. Two interceptions, one for a touchdown, and he has four interceptions as a defensive end. Well, they moved into defensive end this year, but last year he was their nickelback. He does have four or six feet, so he's kind of playing out of position, although I would call him out of position with two interceptions like I that. I wouldn't move him now, would you? <laughs> Heck no. Oklahoma State will kick it away. And we've got Terry Rogers and Dana Brinson deep to receive. A low bouncing kick taken by one of the up men at the 25. Waiting for some help. Gets back to about the 33, 34 yard line and no more. 
All so Nebraska was, will start from there. He just ran some time off the clock. He did for his blockers. <laughs> Didn't go forward. And that's Doug Dalton, the backup fullback, who was in on the kickoff team and took that low bouncer. Good way to kick it off into this 30-mile-an-hour uh, win. Tom Osborne on the sideline has seen his lead cut to seven points. But Jones and Heibel are the running backs. Jones, number six, the deep man in the eye. He has the ball. Dances outside. Good, solid tackle by Mike Hudson. The safety who came up and put down a big kid, 190-pounder Jones. Oklahoma State with something to cheer about right now. They've cut the lead to 14 to 7 after Nebraska jumped on them in a hurry. Second and seven for the Huskers. The wingback is Dana Brinson. He hasn't touched the ball except once tonight. And he is a big play kick. Ooh. Pitch back to Jones. Dangerous pitch that almost resulted in the fumble, but Jones gets it up to the 44-yard line. And a little extracurricular activity afterward. Leonard Jackson chased the play and made the tackle. Jackson's had a uh, big first half defensively for Oklahoma State. Well, he came in with 44 tackles, actually, is their leading tackler. They need a lot of plays from those defensive tackles tonight. Very unusual for Oklahoma State. Their leading tackler is Leonard Jackson, the right tackle. Uh, as a matter of fact, three of the top four tacklers on the team are defensive linemen, and that's extremely unusual. Usually it's your linebackers and, and a strong safety positive. Measurement will give Nebraska the first down. The Cornhuskers had a surprisingly difficult time with South Carolina a week ago. South Carolina really pumped up for the game. And of course, you do get pumped up to play Nebraska. <laughs> Week after week, year after year. Remarkable the record they've maintained. Jones so far, 24 yards on seven carries. This is Heibel who fumbled the football. Looked like he was almost trying to lateral it because he had bobbled the ball and tossed it to one of his own teammates. Heibel had gained 26 yards before uh, that carry. Yeah, watch the linebacker, number 33, Chris Pegram. He plays deep. He's almost like a tailback, and he moves up like a running back, and he's going to split right between the blockers and make this play. And that's what they want to do in Oklahoma State's defense. They have the five linemen up front to take on the blockers. They put their backers deep, the two guys, and they come up like almost like running backs and try to make the plays. It's important for those defensive linemen to keep the offensive line off of the backers so they can make those tackles. Pegram, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas, Texas, number two on this team in tackles, came through and got him. And it's second and eight as Nebraska got to break and retain the ball on that fumble. The officials are discussing the play right now. Not sure what they're talking about. Uh, here comes the explanation. No, they're not going to explain it. They're just going to resume the clock. <laughs> uh, we understand one of the officials may have been a little banged up on the play. Wrong place at the wrong time. No pads and a couple of 250 pounders making a sandwich out of it. Second and eight for the Huskers at their own 46-yard line. They're going with the win here in the second quarter. Taylor, after a nice fake, has room to run. To the Oklahoma State 42-yard line. Finally stopped by Donnie Brown, number four. Steve Taylor's going to run a naked counter play on this. He'll fake to Jones, and then he'll roll left. He's got his tight end, Milliken. He could toss the ball to him right here, but he decides to tuck it. And watch Milliken throw a block. He's going to come in, protect his quarterback, keep the guys off him. He could have gone either way, run or pass on that play. Pegram also in on that stop. Taylor now five carries for 30 yards out of that option offense. Here's the wing back, Brinson. And Brinson diagnosed very well. He's stopping him at the line of scrimmage. We've got another update from Larry Burnett. Larry? Mike Stanford quarterback John Pay has thrown his second touchdown pass against Washington. Here he goes, 19 yards to Jeff James for the score. Washington has added a field goal. It's now 14 to 10 Stanford at halftime. Second and 10, Nebraska with the ball at the Oklahoma State 41-yard line. The Huskers are up 14-7, but the Cowboys are giving them a ball game. They fake the wing back reverse this time, and Taylor has to dive All forward out of the Taylor. tackle of Ricky Shaw, the big play defensive end. Up by 97, Ricky Shaw. <laughs> 
Geez, I thought he was in uh, Reykjavik, Iceland, but uh, wanted to catch this ball game. It feels like Reykjavik, Iceland here. That's right. It may be warmer there than it is tonight here. <laughs> have to see if Tim Brando can get the uh, sideline interview with that gentleman. Second, third, make it third down and seven for Nebraska. Oklahoma State's defense trying to dig in and force Taylor into passing situations. Out of the eye, Jones is the deep man. They fake it to him and go to throw. And off the hands of Milliken may have been tipped by Deckard. It was. He almost picked another one. Deckard's tough. The quarterback, Steve Taylor, is going to throw this ball. You'll see it. He, he kind of sidearms it. He really doesn't have a receiver that open. And you can tell why, because uh, Jerry Deckard, and he's going to go sidearm with this ball. And then Deckard almost picks this off again. You can't see it. And he would have been in the open field again. There, right, we do get to see Deckard. He almost yep. caught that ball. Had it been a little lower, he would have picked another one. He I think tip it. I'd go away from him if I was Nebraska. Dale Klein will come on to try a 55-yard field goal attempt. With the win. He has missed this year from 49. He has hit his longest from 38. He got all of this one. And it's just short. Missed it by a yard. Kick is short. It, was the, it would have been the longest field goal of his career, but he missed it, and Oklahoma State will have the ball when we come back. <laughs> Winter has come early to Lincoln, Nebraska. It is winter tonight, believe me. We're approaching the freezing mark. And the wind chill on the field must be in the teens. Oklahoma State with the football. Thurman Thomas with room to run. And he gets up to midfield. Thomas covered by strong safety Brian Washington. But Thurman Thomas rips off his biggest run of the year, or biggest run of the night, brother. Let's go to Tim Brando on the sideline. And that is exactly what the coaches wanted to do in this drive for Oklahoma State. Free Thurman Thomas up the middle. He has 32 yards now. And then open it up for Riley, Bobby Riley, and Hartley Dykes. In other words, soften the Nebraska secondary a bit more. Challenge them more. Let's see if the freshman has it in him. We understand Mike Wolf has a fractured left fibula. Probably finish him for the season. Gundy under pressure now has room to run. First down and more. Gundy at the 30. Would not run out of bounds. Wanted to pick up extra yardage and driven out hard by Mark Blazek. And there is a flag down after the play. And Pat Jones on the sideline, hoping it's not against his club. After Gundy goes 21 yards, but it is, and boy, is he disappointed. Boy, Mike Gundy showed some speed there. He rolled left and went all the way back across the grain, all the way across the field, and picked up big yardage. Take a look, see if we can tell what happened. Now, let's see Mike Gundy. He's going to roll left here. He's looking for his tight end, 87. Just leaves your screen. He doesn't have it. They defensed it well. Now he has the presence of mind and the athletic ability to start running. He rolls right. He could toss this ball. But he decides to run it. He picks up a blocker late. Let's see if we can pick up the penalty. I think it might be right here. No. Nope. Broke that one. Well, I haven't seen anything thus far. Well, I couldn't see anything. It's coming. Uh, Nebraska player and an Oklahoma State player uh, ended up into uh, the pile there. And it's a dead ball foul. Pat yeah, Jones watch 32. Know. Garrett Limbrick, 32 is going to hit. He's going to block late. Come into your screen right there. He clips and he hits him late. Yeah. Boy, that's a boy. No excuse for that. No need for that penalty. They have first down down the 20 yard line. Just a silly oh. foul. Play's already over. And Garrett Limbrick uh, will be talked to. You can bet when he goes to the sideline. And it's a first and 25 because the penalty occurred after the play was dead. So tough break for Oklahoma State. First and 25 for freshman quarterback Mike Gundy. Play action. Gundy with plenty of time. Throws over the middle. Complete to Hart. Lee Dykes. And Dykes has the ball to the 35-yard line. Brian Washington flattened him. But Gundy has been impressive here in the first half. In there for Ronnie Williams. Well, let's watch Hartley Dykes on his play. Just going to run a simple cross pattern. He gets inside the zone, and Gundy finds him with the ball. And that's a smart play. Yeah, first and 25, pick up 15, 10 of it. You don't have to pick it all up on first down. Nice catch, nice pattern. Very nice throw in that zone. Gundy now three out of six, 61 yards. Two of them to Dykes for 25. 
And it's second and 15 as they did get 10 on that one. Gundy again with time. Throws complete nice to his tight end, Dillard. And Dillard to the 29-yard line where Brad Tyrer brought him down. Gundy is really impressive. He's hanging in there against the pressure and delivering the ball. Fourth catch of the season for Dillard. Well, yeah, Dillard had 22 catches last year, so they really haven't gone to him much this year. That's only the fourth one, as you said, Mike. And uh, they're going to have to start getting the ball more to the tight end because they'll start doubling those wideouts. Dillard is like a loose building when he gets uh, out in the secondary. 255 pounds is a little under that right now. Third and nine for the Cowboys. And Gundy says he can't hear the signals. Didn't seem to be that loud, but we're up here and he's down there. Yeah. And Gundy has the right to ask the official for quiet. They have not signaled a timeout yet. Well, he's cool, isn't he? Freshman quarterback goes up there. He doesn't like the crowd noise, so he just tells the officials he wants to quiet it down. That's exactly what he should do. It's his decision. And he's a true freshman, too, Pat. There had been some talk of redshirting him because Ronnie Williams had such tremendous statistics, but Williams got off to such an awful start at the beginning of this year. They said, the heck with redshirting Gundy. He's got great talents. Bring him in and play him. Well, he threw for just under 5,000 yards his last two years in high school, so Pat Jones made the right decision. His veteran quarterback wasn't playing well. He went to Gundy, and you can see why. Third and nine, and you can bet the crowd will be louder this time. And Gundy goes on to the blitz up the gun. He's got time. The defender fell down. Riley! Riley at the one-yard line. John Custer, the man who fell down. Then Riley almost fell down. And the ball hit him in the chest. What a play, 27 yards. Bobby Riley, he's hurt him. He hurt him big last year, and he's going to do it again here. Nebraska Gamble, they brought three people up the gut. They're backers, and it's man-to-man -man coverage. He outruns the guy when he falls down. Now watch, he's going to slip right now. But he's going to oh. keep his balance and watch the ball and catch it. That's a heck of an athletic play. He did not go down. I'll tell you what, makes your heart stop if you're that wide open and you oh. start to fall down. That's pretty quick to get your hand behind you and then back up to the ball. The field is very slick. It retains a lot of water. First and goal, Oklahoma State. They're going for the tie. Thurman Thomas, airborne, stopped just short. And a little extracurricular activity again as Charlie Fryer and J.R. Dillard started to get into it. Boy, for bad knee, I'll tell you, he sure got high on that thing. He didn't make it, though. I think you have a chance to tie Nebraska. You forget about the aches and pains. And there's Tom Osborne, whose club came in heavily favored. But he's been in that position before, heavily favored almost every time he plays, like last week against South Carolina, a team that went down to the last 19 seconds before it lost. Thurman Thomas now with 33 yards rushing. That's almost what Nebraska gives up in an entire game. Second and goal. And it looked like Oklahoma State, the entire left side of the line, jumped offside. Oh, what a terrible break that would be for Pat Jones. And the officials will now sort it out. It looked like the entire left side jumped. And Bobby Riley has to be a little heart sick that he could not get that extra yard after almost falling down because he had a sure touchdown. Well, today he's happy he made the catch. Tomorrow he'll be yeah. chagrined that he didn't get in the end zone. Wide receivers hate to get to the one or two yard line and have the running backs get the touchdown. Here's the call. Ball start on the offense. And it's the third penalty against State. On the left side of your screen, you'll see the offensive left tackle, jump early, and the guard. One thing you have to understand, they're so much lighter than Nebraska. They want to get off on the count, but they went too early. So now it's second and goal from the six. Two tight ends in the ball game. Everybody in close. Thurman Thomas, the deep man in the eye. And he wants to throw it. Now he's got to go back the other way. Nowhere to run for Thurman Thomas. Number 23, Mark Blazik, and number 91, Tony Holloway. Strung it out. And that looked like an option pass. There's no question what they were doing on this play was, I saw it's very clear on the white screen. Gundy hands the ball off, and he's a receiver. Thurman Thomas is supposed to set up right here and throw back to him, but Gundy was covered by the offense, off uh, the offside defensive end. So now Thurman Thomas is stuck with the ball with no receiver, and he just did the best he could, and that's just run. 
So now it's third and goal. Oklahoma State at the 10 yard line. They are going in the wrong direction. They'll bring Riley and Hartley Dykes back into the ball game. They throw for Dykes. He had it lost it at the goal line. Perfect throw. Just Gundy perfect put it throw. on the numbers at the goal line, and Dykes could not hold it as he was closely covered by Charlie Fryer. Well, this is an ideal situation. You have a six foot four receiver against a five foot ten defensive back, and Gundy puts this right on the numbers. He splits the defenders. Perfect pass. Just a little behind him, but I mean, there wasn't much room to get that ball in there. So now they'll have to go with the field goal. Brad Dennis from 27 yards. Excuse me, this is O'Donnell in to try it. Has the stronger leg. O'Donnell puts it up. And it's good. So Oklahoma State within a yard of tying it up. They settle for the field goal. They're down by four. We've got a good one in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers lead the Cowboys 14 to 10. Less than five minutes to go first half. Oklahoma State will kick off. Deep to receive Rodgers 20 and Brinson 33. Rodgers, by the way, the son of former Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rodgers. And this is O'Donnell, the man who kicked the field goal to kick it away. Rodgers, number 20, to the near side. They have unretired the number of Johnny Rodgers to give it to his son. It's quite a story. That's wonderful. And yeah. this kid can fly. Yes, he can. <laughs> Just because you're playing second string in Nebraska doesn't mean you're not going to be a great football player. Another low bouncing kick. Again, one of the up men takes it near the 30-yard line, comes out to about the 38. And Nebraska will start from there once again. It's back up fullback Doug Dalton on the kickoff team. And he showed he was coachable that time. He <laughs> caught the ball, and he ran north and south, which is exactly what he should do. They have the ball 39-yard line. Great field position. If you're going to squib kick like that, you have to get it by those up guys, or you're going to be in trouble. 14 to 10 as Oklahoma State has come back from a 14 nothing deficit to make it a ball game and if Riley who makes the long touchdown or long catch does not slip and fall at the one yard line it's a touchdown and a tie ball game. Brinson the man in motion and they'll give it to Keith and zone Jones breaks it across the 50 might go all the way. He's a 4-3-3 dash man to the 15 yard line. Boy, can he fly. Well, he can run, but it's nice to have a hole like this. Thurman Thomas is fantasizing about it, seeing this much room. Watch this. I mean, there is no one there. Now watch him take off. He won the Big 8 60-yard sprint last year, the title at six point something. I mean, he can really fly. 4-3-3, legitimate. And when he gets out in the open field, not many people are going to catch him. This is what Nebraska does so well. When they are challenged, they respond. Here comes they come on the blitz. At Heibel, the fullback, goes inside the tender about the seven-yard line. Stopped by Moore and Donnie Brown. Tim Brando has an update at the sideline. Tim? One thing to watch for, Mike and Pat, where Steve Taylor's concerned with that injury, is the center snap. Now, George Sullivan, the trainer, told me earlier that there had been some complaints from Taylor with regard to the center exchange. Now, as cold it is, as it is, in the third quarter, it may not be a problem. He may not feel his hands. Thank you, Tim. Nebraska now has 153 yards rushing first half. Taylor almost lost the ball on that exchange and gets down to the five-yard line. They'll stack him up there. Pegram, number 33, hanging on along with Leonard Jackson. This is what Timmy was talking about right here. As far as it's difficult to get this exchange with a bad hand, this is up close. It's excellent camera work. Watch this. He's going to bobble it. That's almost a turnover. And furthermore, right here, he's running the option to the left, and he really doesn't have the option to pitch it because his left hand is bad. They're just running that play, and they're either giving it to the belly guy or he's keeping it himself. Taylor, seven carries, 36 yards. It's third and a yard for the Huskers. Great camera work by our crew, guys, and they're out there freezing. Jones, first down. Touchdown. Cooper, the center, is going to have a clean exchange with the quarterback, Steve Taylor, here. And then it's just into the end zone. Nebraska sets you up. They go outside with Jones, and they come inside with Heibel. They go outside with the option with Taylor, and back to Jones right up the middle for the touch. 
Klein is on to try the point after. A bit of a high snap, but they got it down. Fleet Blakeman, the holder, the backup quarterback. And Klein kicks it through. So the 2.56 to go in the half. Nebraska 21, Oklahoma State 10. You, you look even worse than you feel when it gets this cold. That's not a mask. <laughs> 21-10, Nebraska over Oklahoma State with 2.56 to go. So what a turnaround. Oklahoma State was within a yard of tying the ball game up. A couple of minutes later, they're down by 11. Klein will kick it away. Riley and Sanders deep to receive. Bouncing ball goes to Riley. And he's buried at the 17-yard line. Let's take a look at that last touchdown in Keith Enzone Jones. Well, this is a nice chance to be able to see what an eye back or the deep tailback has an opportunity to see the blockers in front of him. You see, he cut. He was originally supposed to go to the right. He's deep enough where he has time to make that cut left, get his shoulders down, and get into the end zone. That's what it looks like when you're an eye back or a deep tailback. So Oklahoma State will have two minutes and 52 seconds to operate. Here's the scoring drive as Nebraska answers the Oklahoma State score in a minute 41. It went 61 yards. Thurman Thomas has had a pretty good first half, gets the handoff, and is dragged down from behind by Broderick Thomas. He is Mike Singletary's nephew, and it's always nice to have the bloodlines. Well, he uh, recovered three fumbles against Oregon earlier this year, and he stripped that ball last week and helped win that South Carolina game. So he is a big play player. Thomas, 31 carries so far. That's Broderick Thomas who made the tackle. We're talking about Thurman. Clock running. Oklahoma State facing second and eight. Gundy to throw. Little flare to Thurman Thomas. Got a screen in front of him. Cuts it back. He's got enough for the first down to the 29-yard line. Let's go to Larry Burnett. He has an update from Bristol, Connecticut. All right, Mike, the Georgia Bulldogs coming back at Baton Rouge, second quarter here. And James Jackson rolling out, looking for David McCloskey. He gets it and gets into the end zone to make it 10 to 7. Georgia has scored again. They have taken the lead. It's 13 to 10 over LSU late in the second quarter. Oh, you hairy dogs. See, both of those clubs are both good. First and 10. For Oklahoma State, ball marked at the 30. Thomas on the sweep. Nowhere to go, and he slips. Jeff Jamrod, number 80, had it diagnosed beautifully and was standing there waiting for Thurman Thomas. And even though this is artificial turf and they are wearing rain shoes, there's not a lot of traction out there. Well, he had no chance. You, know, you pitch the ball and you have a defensive end come in your face this quickly, like number 80, Jeff Jamrod's gun. You go see on the right side of your screen, he's just going to come up here out of nowhere. Thurman Thomas does the best thing he can do. He tries to cut back against the grain. There's just no chance. Got to give a running back running room. Gundy in a passing situation. He's 6 out of 10 for 103 yards. He's had a good first half. Draw Thomas. And he's buried as he got back to the original line of scrimmage. Danny Noonan, number 95, was the first man there waiting for him. Thomas. Talking to the Nebraska coaches, what they were most enthused about defensively is, of course, they're big and strong. But this is the most speed they've ever had on the defensive line. They're really able to, you know, they have the great strength with Danny Noonan at nose guard. And the other, the defensive ends and tackles can run so well, they can really stop the option game in those wide pitches. A little surprising, Nebraska is not stopping the clock. They have two timeouts left. We're down to 39 seconds. And Oklahoma State can take its time and maybe run out the clock without having to punt into the wind. If they keep it on the ground, if they throw, it's a different story. And Gundy will give it to Thomas. They just want to run out the clock. He stopped at the 31-yard line. Ball came loose, but it's got to be late. And now the officials are conferring as to whether it's a fumble or not, and they say it is dead. 21 seconds left in the half, and with that 25-second play clock, they're not going to have to make the snap. Let's see if this was after the clock or not. He's hit. A little oh, face mask there face they didn't call. His progress has definitely stopped, and uh, he's oh. way up to the play. The guy that made that tackle, Leroy Etienne, I've got to give you the statistics. One of the greatest I've ever heard. He was the Louis, uh, Louisiana Player of the Year in 83 and 84. He had 210 solo tackles his senior season. Oh. <laughs> I've never heard that many tackles. 
And now Nebraska will call a timeout, but there's three seconds to go. Nebraska had a chance, I think, here, Pat, to put Oklahoma State in a tough position punting into the win. They had two timeouts left. They let the clock run down to three seconds. Well, that really isn't going to do much good. Uh, what the punter needs to do here is he really shouldn't kick the ball. He should just catch right. it and run around, but not drop the ball, as we yeah. saw earlier against Georgia. I, I agree with you, Mike. They really should have called timeout after that third down play, for sure. Awful tough on a punter kicking into the wind. And Tom Osborne talking to the official, and uh, the, the gesture would lead you to believe that something is amiss over there. Got uh, Larry and Bino coming up with all the scores and highlights, and a lot of the teams that were expected to win one big. Others did not have uh, big games today, and we'll have a report on the uh, future of Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator at UCLA. Boy, UCLA has had a tough time, although they did come from behind and win today. And I'm sure uh, Bino may be talking about the future of Fred Akers at Texas, who uh, really took his lumps today. And the alumni have been on it. Well, the most disappointed uh, player out of the field right now is Rod Smith, who returned that punt earlier for a touchdown. I know he wanted to get his hands on the ball again. Yeah. yeah I don't think he will. I think you're right. They, they shouldn't even bother to punt this ball. They only have to run three seconds off the clock. And they're doing the right thing. They're not even going into punt formation. Gundy is going to take the snap from center. All he's got to do is kill three seconds. And a dangerous play as he goes on the toss, although you cannot run with a fumble after it's hit the ground. Thomas makes the tackle on Thurman Thomas. And that's the end of the first half. Our score here in Lincoln, Nebraska, before a sellout homecoming crowd is Nebraska 21 and Oklahoma State 10. A big first half for the Huskers, but Oklahoma State has made it a ball game. Stay with us. We're at halftime. We're here at halftime on the MetLife halftime. Halftime on the MetLife halftime. Pat Jones, who is uh, usually much more emotional on the sideline than we have seen him in the locker room tonight. And he is exactly the kind of coach, I think, Pat, that uh, a program like Oklahoma State needs. He is a motivator, someone that really gets his kids up. Well, I can think you could, you could see there when the way he talks intimately with his players instead of screaming at them. Well, you, the persona you see on the sideline is not what that team sees. And I that's think that's right. very important. He. He's like a friend to him, and that's why they're playing well tonight. This is a tough game, yet they're performing well at Nebraska. And they are playing well. If you take a look at the halftime statistics, uh, Oklahoma State is right there with Nebraska. And in fact, they have 62 yards rushing, which is above Nebraska's average so far this year. They've only been allowing 54 yards on the ground. That's for an entire game. The big difference, I think, is that Smith punt return that uh, really broke it open early in the first quarter. Well, that and the, the early kickoff return, they came right out and uh, going into this game, you know, a team that's undermanned physically as Oklahoma State is, they need to play exceptionally well in the special teams. They've given up two big returns, and on their side of the ball, they have not broken a big one. O'Donnell will kick it away, and deep to receiver Terry Rogers, number 20, and Dana Brinson, 33. Rogers has not had a chance uh, to catch the ball from scrimmage, and he would like to get his hands on it. On a kickoff return, another low bouncer. Loose. Rodgers, he's a burner. Stumbled and lost his balance, and Mark Moore, the All-American, playing on special teams, made the tackle at the 40 after a 26-yard kickoff return. Here's what Nebraska did in the first half. The first time they got their hands on the ball, they went in for the touchdown to make it 7 to nothing. Then they were stopped two consecutive drives by interceptions, and the second one of those interceptions went for the Oklahoma State touchdown. Then the next possession, they had a missed field goal and scored on their final possession of the first half. See what Nebraska can do here in the second half. They'll give it to Micah Heibel, the fullback across the 40, up to about the 42-yard line, where Sim Green, the middle linebacker, is in on the tackle for the Cowboys, along with number 98, David Bailey, the left tackle. David Bailey. Boy, Drain did a heck of a job of filling that hole. He came from six, seven yards deep, and he was running faster than the ball carry, and he dropped Heibel right in his tracks. That's what those middle linebackers need to do for Oklahoma State. Heibel, who gained only 103 yards coming into this ball game, has eight carries for 37. It's a second and seven situation right now for Big Red. Taylor wants to throw near sideline and off the fingertips of Rob Snitzler who was operating with a bad shoulder 
Snisler couldn't hold him. One interesting thing about Nebraska's passing game, the backs have caught one pass the entire season. That's not counting the wing back. Well, that's it's just unbelievable. And you'd think with someone like Jones and some of the running backs they have, Rodgers, they'd want to get that ball out to the receivers, uh, the backs as receivers. But I guess they're so confident in the running game, they just want to throw the ball downfield to their tight end wide receivers and let the running backs run. And it's a little tougher to throw to the backs out of the eye, too. Nebraska has converted four out of six on third down. They're facing third and seven right now. Taylor wants to run the option, and Oklahoma State defenses it very well. He gets to the 46, but that's going to be about three yards shy of the first down, so Oklahoma State holds on defense. Well, Pat Jones told them at halftime that they're playing defense better than they have in 83, 84, and 85, and they held right there. David Bailey again on the stop. And this will be the first time that John Croker will have to come on to kick it away. He's averaging 41.1. Sophomore, 180 pounds, 5'11". He will be kicking into the wind here in the third quarter. And you'd have to think if Oklahoma State is going to do something on offense, they need to do it in the third quarter with that 30-mile-an-hour wind, and the conditions are getting nothing but worse. Croker. Fair catch signal for, and it almost hit Riley, but he got out of the way. Once again, Riley lost his balance. Oh, this was really close. But again, the field came into play here. Riley comes up. He's having trouble. I wonder if he should be wearing those rain turf shoes. He's going to come up to catch this ball. It's a short, wobbly kick. He's got a fair catch, but then he slips right there. But again, he catches himself with that left hand. And this ball oh. nearly hits his shoulder. I don't know if he was acting or if that ball did miss. Awfully close. Not good field position for the Cowboys. They have it at the 17-yard line. After a 36-yard punt into a 30-mile-an-hour win. Oklahoma State down by 11, 21 to 10. And this is the freshman, Mike Gundy. A true freshman, not a red shirt. And he gives it off to Thurman Thomas. Fumble! And Gundy recovers at the 10-yard line. Oh. Thomas coughed it up, but Gundy got it back. Well, Thomas uh, really never had this ball solidly. Just out of the eye. He's going to come up, pick his hole. Oh, then he did have it, and he got stripped. Got stripped. Tony Holloway was the man who knocked it away from him, number 91 from the right end. It's a good thing Gundy followed through with his fake. He handed the ball off, acted like he was passing the ball. He was eight yards deep, and the ball rolled to him. That's that right. Very fortunate. Second and 17. Oklahoma State in a deep hole at its own 10. And they'll go the conservative route. Thurman Thomas tried to cut it back. He was hit first by Kevin Parsons, and Mark Munford, number 41, wrapped it up. Here's what Oklahoma State was able to do with surprisingly good offense in the first half. The first time they had the ball, they had to punt it away. Second time, they missed a field goal. The third time, they went for it on fourth and short, lost the ball on downs. Then they had their uh, only offensive score of the first half on a field goal after a first and goal situation, and then halftime ended with them in possession. Thurman Thomas, a tough 17 carries tonight, 36 yards. He is averaging 81 yards a ball game. Third and long. And they want to go for all of it, throwing deep. Little contact, no flag, and Hart Lee Dykes is up beefing at the official. He thought he got bumped on the way down by Brian Davis. And they want to keep Davis on him, who is 6'2", because Hartley Dykes is 6'4". The other corner of Fryer is only 5'10". Well, there's definitely some contact here, but I think it was the right call by the officials. I think it was incidental. They're both going for the ball. That's a good play defensively. That is not a penalty. Excellent job by the officials. Cooper will come on to punt to Brinson and Smith. Smith is the one who broke the one in the first quarter for 63 yards and a touchdown. Smith is 88. Brinson 33, and Cooper will hit it from his three-yard line. Oh, nice kick. With the win, and got it up. Cooper. Got a seam. 40, 30, to the 24-yard line, and the punt return team of Nebraska does it again. A 38-yard return after a 49-yard kick. Dana Brinson, tremendous speed. Again, this ball, it's a nice long kick, but it was a little low with that win, and now they set up this just excellent picket. I mean, they had them all blocked, except the last guy, he cuts back, runs into his own man, and they make the tackle, but you can't set up punts any better than that one, that punt return. Excellent wall. Great return by Dana Brinson, puts the ball at the 24-yard line. And they'll give it to Brinson on the wing back reverse. 
Brinson to the 14-yard line. That should be good enough for a first down, and Brinson, coming into this game, averaged 14 yards a carry when he ran the ball. Well, Dana Brinson is a threat at that wingback spot. They run it very effectively. Just a little cross buck to him. They pull the guard, make the block, and then it's just speed around the corner. Walter, that's a tackle making that pull. They said he was big and he's fast. And when you pull a tackle from the opposite side and make a block like that, you can do it all. There is Brinson, who's gained 14 yards on three carries. First and 10, Nebraska, leading 21 to 10, bidding for more. Nelson, the man in motion, and they run the option. The pitch to Jones, no dice, fumble! No, it's dead there, though. But that it's ball dead. hit the ground, and Oklahoma State cannot advance the fumble. That's Moore going for what he would hope to be a touchdown, but the ball hit the ground. But it's going to be an Oklahoma State recovery of the fumble as Jones coughed it up. The third Nebraska turnover. They run the option to the right on this play. Taylor just fakes the belly now. Pitch out to Jones. He has plenty of time. Guess Puts who? it away, but it strips him. Jerry Deckard stripped it. <laughs> He's probably mad that he didn't catch the pitch or catch it in the air, so he could have advanced it. Jerry Deckard, who has two interceptions, one for a touchdown, caused that fumble. Now Oklahoma State has a chance to get back in it. Gundy bombs away, throwing for Hartley Dykes, and the ball hit him on the shoulder and went incomplete. Charlie Fryer on coverage, and Fryer, the man this time, that wanted the interference call. Well, that was a great play by Hartley Dykes. Exactly what you're supposed to do as a receiver. He really didn't have a chance to catch this ball, but he's going to take it away from Fryer. Remember, he's six, he's six inches taller than Fryer on this play, and he'll come back and watch it. He'll knock this ball away. This is what good receivers do. He's no chance to catch it, so he'll go over Fryer and knock it down. You don't care if you get interference. You just don't want an interception. Well, Fryer may have had a point there. He got bumped before <laughs> the ball got there. So Gundy Fryer now. Back. Gundy, 6 out of 11, 104 yards, facing second and 10 from his own 21. They're trying to throw with that win. They give it to the fullback, Garrett Limbrick, and absolutely nothing as he is buried by Tony Holloway. A hitter at 205. So it's going to be third and long for the Cowboys. Well, Holloway was the one that stripped that ball uh, on the last drive that uh, Gundy fell on after Thomas fumbled it. He is in that backfield very fast as a defensive end. Third down, call it 11. Oklahoma State now averaging just a little over two yards a carry. They've gained 57 yards on the ground. I think Gundy is going to have to put it up on this one. Four-man rush. He wants to throw a quick screen to Riley. And Riley driven out of bounds at the 26-yard line. He'll be far shy of the first down. Broderick Thomas out there quickly and knocked him out of bounds. That was a clever little play, though. He threw out the wide out and the other wide out block. Uh, almost an effective shield-type pass to the wide out. Terry Cooper will come on to punt. And it's probably the one thing Pat Jones doesn't want to see is Brinson and Smith go back to take a punt. They've been devastated. Brinson is 33, Smith 88, Smith has a touchdown. Brinson has a big return. Cooper would like to get one. It's another low kick. And Smith avoids a couple of tackles and finally stops at the 42-43 yard line. The best punt coverage Oklahoma State has had in a six yard return. Timeout, 10-10 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska by 11. Quarter in Lincoln, Nebraska, 10-10 left to go in the period. It's Nebraska 21, Oklahoma State 10. It's been quite a ball game, and Nebraska has it at its own 42-yard line. Jones, who fumbled the last time he carried, hangs on to this one and gets to the 45-yard line. Mark Moore, the All-American free safety, who's playing a corner tonight on the bottom of that pile. You know, it's interesting, Mike, how uh, one player can have such impact. Last week, we saw Orangeby Crenshaw almost single-handedly slow down right. Baylor, and tonight, Jerry Deckard, Two interceptions, cause another fumble. One guy on your defense is enough to disrupt a lot of offenses. You were saying something during the commercial. Pat Jones has got to be a little discouraged. His offense has played well. His defense has played well. You don't expect to come to Nebraska and lose to the punt return team. Second and seven. Brinson, the wingback. Again, with a lot of room to run. And they'll bring him down this time at the Oklahoma State 45. The fumble came after the play. Rod Smith on the tackle playing free safety. 44, Mark 4, 47, Jerry Decker. Again, it's an underneath handoff. Let's see what Decker does on this play. Oh, he gets blocked. 
But he's not going to give up. He comes back and makes the play anyway. So they're blocking him all over the field, but he's not going to go down. He gets up, makes the play there, but it's uh, eight, nine, oh, 11 yards down the field on that play. And he was blocked by Stan Parker, who outweighs him by 64 pounds. And when you're standing still, you're not going to play off that block very well. First and 10, Huskers. Jones, room to run. Nice play by Mike Hudson, who fought off the block to make the tackle. Strong safety number 10 also got some help from Sim Drain at the end. Linebackers haven't been there a lot for Oklahoma State, both of them freshmen, and such youth in the front seven of this Oklahoma State defense. They've really acquitted themselves very well tonight. Oh, yeah, the front, uh, you know, the only thing they could do against this Nebraska team, so much bigger on the offensive line, they had to use their quickness, and they've really done it effectively. They've changed their fronts, they've stunted, and they've used the blitz when they needed to. That defensive line's doing a whale of a job. Pat Jones and his coaching staff deserve a lot of credit for the uh, defensive game plan. Here's Taylor on the option, pitches it back, and to Brinson, who carries it out of bounds. Let's see if he got enough for the first down, and it appeared he did. And it will be another first down, Nebraska. They're trying to build the score right now. They're leading 21 to 10. Pretty good pitch with his left hand. Yeah. And if you, if you joined us late, Taylor has a dislocated finger on his left hand. And you have to wonder if Oklahoma State uh, knew about it at all or set their defense to not worry about the option of the left hand side because with the ball in your left hand is so difficult to pitch it. I think they have. In fact, they stunted their uh, defensive line to the wide side that last play. Oh. Jones took a shot from Mark Moore. Moore really came up and nailed him. Jackson also went on the stop. There's the big guy, Jackson. Well, in zone Jones, tackles. well, in zone Jones had some big holes, but sometimes as running back, you don't have anywhere to go. This is one of those cases. Oh, just gets hammered both sides. Nice little uh, end zone sandwich on that play. I'm sorry, I said it was more. It was Jackson, the first man in there. And he's made a lot of plays tonight. Sure has. Came in as their leading tackler, and he's proved himself well tonight. Second and eight, Nebraska. Oklahoma State trying to dig in on defense. Taylor, play action. Trying to get to the outside, and they'll chase him out of bounds. And a flag goes down. And they're starting to get into it on the sideline. You do not want to hit an opposing team's quarterback when you're visiting a place like Lincoln, Nebraska, at the Nebraska bench. A flag went down. I'm not sure if that player wasn't knocked into the bench rather than running in there. But we'll find out. And boy, there's some people really hot. And Pat Jones is going to go over and try to get his team back on the field. A real wise move by Pat Jones. Man, pleasant guy to talk to. Done a whale of a job at Oklahoma State. Three straight bowls they've gone to, and they're certainly not out of the bowl picture this year, particularly if they can play uh, well tonight and keep this game scored. Okay, Taylor again showing his speed here. He just moves he's like a running back out there. He comes to the sidelines. And very late. Oh. Absolutely unnecessary. That was Mark Moore. Who That's not, him. That is not an All-America play by Mark Moore. You don't expect it out of one of your leaders on the defense. This just oh. gives him a first down. Oh. And it just shouldn't be part of football. You don't hit a quarterback five yards out of bounds. You don't hit anybody. Well, after a shot like that, you'll be late for the dance. Oh. And Cleet Blakeman done a job. Here's a man who spent his entire coaching career at Nebraska was an assistant to Bob Devaney, uh, who did a wonderful job and is currently the athletic director. And Osborne has done nothing but win and win and win. Very rare example of uh, someone following a legend. I mean, yes. Bob Devaney was definitely a legend in the sport, one of the great coaches in the modern era. He came right in, he built his own dynasty. Helps to have someone like that as your athletic director, too. Though. Sure does. He's, he's been there and he knows what it's all about. He's done a whale of a job as athletic director, too. Third and one for Nebraska. Jones got the first down to the three-yard line. And another flag is down, and we've got more action. I think it's Mark Moore action. Yeah. The crowd booing. Yeah, 
here's a, a yard and oh. a half personal foul. <laughs> yeah. That's really a tough penalty. Pat Jones trying to point out something to his defense. Uh, you want him to hit hard, but enough is enough. Well, this is an altercation. It's, it's going to be deep in the end zone on the right hand side of your screen. If we do get it, he picks up the first down. It is just that's good blocking. It's late. That's now, John McCormick. Now it's Hudson. And more involved. But that that's pretty ticky tack there. I don't yeah, know about they should that. not have given that penalty to uh, Hudson, who came over because McCormick threw a late block. He was trying to get back and more. First and goal from the two. The officials want to control it, and not let it get out of hand. Blakeman touchdown. There's another penalty, and that was on Moore. Uh, that was silly. The guy seven yards in the end zone, and Moore decks it. You know, emotion is one thing, but late hits and losing control is something no football player should do. It only hurts your team. Well, I agree with you. If that was Mark Moore again, uh, I think you got to take him out of the ball game. And if you don't take him out of the ball game, somebody ought to throw him out. Well, I, he's going to get thrown out of here soon by this crowd. Uh, I don't think there's any question. On the first hit, if there's a hit like that violent on the sidelines, you're threatening someone's career. Knocking out a player, you should be kicked out of the game. And Fleet I think Blakeman. suspended. I think suspended the next week or two. Fleet Blakeman, the man who scores the touchdown, will hold for Dale Klein as the score is mounted at 27 to 10. And Klein will try to make it an 18-point lead and does. Blakeman comes in and runs the option very effectively here. He'll take the snap cleanly, make the belly. He's got the pitch man wide. He just holds it. Now he's six or seven yards deep in the end zone. Mark Moore comes up and hits him. Totally unnecessary. That's two personal fouls. Three out of four plays. Mark get Moore is a game. great player, but you can't do that. 6.05 to go third quarter. It's 28-10, Nebraska. Well, here's the touchdown again. He's just going to option left. Blakeman, fake the belly. He's going to keep the ball. He'll be in the end zone clearly. Mark Moore comes up and bangs him late. I mean, he's just standing there. He's, he scored. He's happy. Now he's on his back. He could be hurt. Mark Moore could have knocked out their first and second string quarterbacks in and three plays. That's right. That's not fair to the team at Nebraska. It's just not fair. Shouldn't be still in the game. He should be out of there. So they'll mark off the penalty on the kickoff, and they'll kick it off into the wind. Klein will kick from the 50-yard line with Riley, number one, and Barry Sanders, number 21, deep to receive. And we will get an update on uh, Taylor for you, the quarterback, and maybe Blakeman, who was a little shaken up after that hit, uh, as soon as we can. Tim Brando checking on that at the sideline for us right now. Klein to kick it away, 28-10 Nebraska. High into the wind, and it will hang up short. Fumble! Oklahoma State got it back. Riley bobbled the ball and fell on it. It's tough to catch it into uh, the wind like that. Into the wind, high kick. He knows they're coming down on him, but boy, did he get lucky here. Right now, he's going to be laying down, and the ball bounces right back to him just before three red shirts fall on it. Oh, he was very fortunate. There's Taylor on the sideline. He's got the rain gear on, and it doesn't look like he'll be back in because uh, Blakeman is the guy who's got standing closer to Tom Osborne, and he doesn't have the uh, rain gear on. This field position is because of that late penalty because they kicked off 15 yards shorter. Gundy will give it to Thurman Thomas, and you don't think Nebraska's defense is fired up? I wouldn't want to have the ball if I was in a white uniform. Let's go down to Tim Brando on the sideline. Tim? Mike, right now, Steve Taylor is in good shape. They administered to him. They gave him some smelling sauce. He just got dinged. But now, considering the score and the weather conditions and his hand, it might complicate things to put him back in. So look for Blakeman on the next series. And this entire Nebraska team has their eye on Mark Moore right now. If Mark Moore is in the game on the next series, he better watch out. Second and nine. Whistles, flags everywhere, and the officials are really hustling in there trying to keep these teams apart. They are going to war. Well, that's the left side of that line again. They jumped early. They're young. Jason Kidder, the left tackles, replaced uh, Mike Wolf, who has that broken tibia or fibula. And it's on Oklahoma State. <laughs> oh, 
Right in the middle of your screen. 95 Danny Noonan. He has a free shot. Boy, he took it. Oh. 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 He could have knocked all three down. Thurman Thomas backed up. Now, this is the domino right here. Boom, boom. Okay. Noonan bench press is 485, uh, and he took two guys down on that one. Just threw them right out of the way. That is now seven penalties against Oklahoma State, a total of 62 yards. Second and 13. And Gundy says, I can't hear a thing. Young man shown great boys tonight, a true freshman who is replacing Ronnie Williams. Williams, who threw for 363 yards against Nebraska a year ago and made it a game in Stillwater, has been benched in favor of the freshman who has done quite a job. And now the crowd, you can bet, is really going to be on Oklahoma State after they found out they could stop play once. <laughs> trying to quiet him down because it could lead to a penalty. It's not working. Gundy on the quick count. Throwing out of his own end zone. Contact over there and no flag. Hart Lee Dykes again up saying something to the official as he was bumped by Charlie Fryer. Well, I think this is a good play by Charles Fryer. Ball is uh, going to be thrown by Gundy. It's a deep throw. It's up in the air a long time. Fryer is trying to get through Lee Dykes to the ball, which is a good play. You can't see it there, but uh, it was. Yeah, he threw it. Just didn't get enough on that ball. He was rolling to his left. He had a pass rush on it. He was lucky that wasn't intercepted. Oklahoma State will only have the wind for another five minutes and 14 seconds in this quarter, and the wind is about 30 miles an hour. Gundy from deep in his own end zone. It's a safety. The ball came loose, but it doesn't matter. It was a safety. Gundy, the second time in this series, went back in the end zone to throw, and they got to him this time. Nebraska has scored just about every way you can. Hunt returns offense, and St. Broderick Thomas gets credit for this safety, number 89. Well, that shows you one thing. <laughs> we'll see if Broderick Thomas is going to come in 89 to make this play. Said earlier, he's a big play player, and that's a safety. He's just so quick, and he's so strong at his size. It's tough to block him man to man. But this shows, Mike, you do not want to get a team fired up when you're on the road. Oh, no. Danny Noonan taking out his normal two guys, keeping him busy, which frees up someone like Roderick Thomas to make the play. When you have to double team your nose guard, it's going to free up those ends and tackles for the plays. Noonan got to the party anyhow. Let's meet at the quarterback. But Danny Noonan, they say he's unbelievable. You know, he's huge. He's 6'4", 280. And uh, they say that he eats 6,500 calories. He tries to intake 6,500 calories a day. He comes in meetings with a half gallon of milk and six bananas and eats them while he's looking at Phil. 6,500 calories is a buffet by yourself. <laughs> There's Pat Jones who now has his club down 30 to 10 and Oklahoma State will have to give it away on the free kick from the 20 yard line. And Nebraska will send its kick return people back. Brinson and Smith, 33 and 88, respectively. And Cooper will have to kick it. He's got the wind in his back. He has gotten off some good kicks, but they have been low and returnable. And Nebraska has burned them on the punt returns. And that's what this is. Not a good kick this time. It's going to go out of bounds. Kick it from the 15 now. It's not like a normal punt. A free kick must stay in play, so you'll be penalized five yards. Well, they're definitely going to get a big uh, set up, a big punt return here. This is the optimum position to be in. <laughs> He'll have about 30 yards between uh, the ball and the tacklers when he catches this. Now, Nebraska has the option, of course. They can take the ball where it went out of bounds. 
when they're going to do it. That surprises me. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. The ball went out of bounds untouched. The penalty is declined. It'll be first down. There's a timeout with five minutes and five seconds to go. Third quarter. It's Nebraska by 20. American safety Mark Moore on the Oklahoma State sideline. He is not in there right now. Of course, none of the starting defensive backs are in there. Pat Jones has gone with his second team defensive secondary. So we don't know if Moore will be back in the ball game or not. He has been involved in, in two very flagrant personal foul calls on the last Nebraska drive. And Blakeman has gone out, and Taylor is back in a quarterback. Heibel across the 40 dragging people to the 43 yard line good run by Heibel Pegram number 33 in on the tackle the tackle by 16 Marcus Tim Brando has an update for us from the sideline Tim right now Mark Moore is not playing but he has not been tossed out of this game Pat Jones just thought it was in the best interest of Moore and his team to give him a break and that's what he's getting right now Terry Rogers, number 20, comes in for the first time at the I-back spot, but they'll give it to Brinson. Brinson just oh, tripped up. Could have had a lot more out of that play. And the man who got him was number 98, David Bailey, who's turned in a fine defensive performance for the Cowboys. Well, when they give that ball to Brinson, they're so effective now. As I said earlier, their offensive line is big and they're fast. They're pulling their offside tackles and that play was Rod Maggard, 72, 72 made the block and leading them around the end. It's awful tough when the line can run so well laterally to stop them. And there is Ronnie Williams, who is now the backup quarterback. And this is Rogers for the first time. The son of former Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers, who is wearing his number. They took it out of retirement. Leonard Jackson made the tackle. Uh -huh. There's a picture of the great Johnny Rogers. The battles he had with Greg Pruitt. There's the Heisman Trophy he took home. The unretired jersey his son's wearing tonight. That's really a class move by Tom Osborne. Sure is. And a, and there and a great is. thrill for the young man to be able to wear his dad's number. It's really touching. He is a freshman out of National City, California. Turner. Throwing deep, he's got a man out there. It was his tight end, Todd Milliken, but he overthrew him. And there is a flag down. I think we're going to have a late hit as Taylor was nailed, and the man who got him was Sim Drain, the middle linebacker. Right now, Oklahoma State's just killing themselves. Uh, they're taking themselves right out of the game. He's a middle backer, 53, Sim Drain, right in the left part of your screen. He's going to come up, and he's going to come in. He's going to hit Taylor. The ball's already gone. He could have laid off, and now he's going to take him down. That's what the penalty is. Yeah, I think if he had just hit him and then held him up, there wouldn't have been a penalty because he didn't get there that late. But when he drove him into the turf, and that is the eighth penalty against the Cowboys, 77 yards. The on the defense, it's first down. <laughs> this is how wet. Oh, <laughs> Good slide time. <laughs> that's the optional cheer. You don't have to do that if you're a cheerleader. That's right. I want Timmy Brando to do it. Well, let's see if we can get him to try that. <laughs> 331 to go third quarter. Brinson is the man in motion. Rogers the eye back, and he's got the ball. Oh, he's quick. He can fly. He is quick. Rogers <laughs> to the nine yard line. Ball came loose, but it was after he hit the ground. Terry Rogers, the 165 pound freshman. Rips off 27 yards. Well, we saw, earlier tonight, he had a he returned a kickoff, and you could really see some of his father. His balance, you know, he's smaller. He's a little smaller, but he may be a little quicker than his father was. Macho just cut behind these blockers again. They're pulling them out. They're so big, the guards and tackles. And now it's just a matter of cutting. And this is a real wet field. He's got great footing. He's, he loses it there at the end, but very low center of gravity and great ex acceleration. He's going to score a lot of touchdowns before he's done here. This field is wet, and he showed uh, great balance, as Pat said, until he slipped getting inside the 10. First and goal from the 9 for the Huskers, trying to break it open. Heibel 
still on his feet inside the five, dragging people to the two. Micah Heibel, the backup fullback, playing because Ken Kalen is injured. And let's talk about the Nebraska injuries for a second. They have, they are so deep, Pat, they have overcome a lot of injuries to starters. Well, listen to what they've lost in their offensive backfield. Ken Kalen, their starting fullback. Doug DeBose, Heisman Trophy candidate, eye back. Vaughn Shepard, their starting wing back, and Tom Banderas, their starting tight end, and they're still in the top five. And Shepard, a great player at wing back. Of course, DuBose, you mentioned Heisman Trophy candidate, and they just reload and bring him off the bench. Second goal from the two. Rogers hitting the backfield, fumble the ball. It's still loose, and Oklahoma State has it. They got it on the bounce, picked up by Mike Hudson. The ball is dead after it hit the ground. It can only be recovered and not advanced. But the second time, Nebraska's had the ball deep in Oklahoma State territory and coughed it up. Well, when you're five foot seven and 165 yards and you get a handoff and you get hit this hard when you don't have time to put the ball away, you're going to fumble the ball. There he's a true freshman and he just gets, oh, he gets stripped. He didn't even get hit that hard. He went down. And the ball's wet. Remember, the ball's wet. It's awfully hard to hang on to that ball. Oklahoma State will have the ball deep in their own territory when we come back down by 20. Oklahoma State, if it's going to make a comeback, is running out of time. 2.24 to go, third quarter. They're down by 20, and they'll send in Ronnie Williams, the junior from Wichita Falls, Texas, and he will run the offense. They'll toss it on the first play to Thurman Thomas. No dice. Mark Munford, who's coming back off a crippling knee injury and surgery to rebuild the knee, make the tackle, and it's quite a story for that young man to come back. Well, he's a two-time uh, All-Big 8 selection. They really didn't know if he'd be able to come back or not. Just an awful knee surgery it's a huge scar and he just worked himself back in and look at that mm. and he's back playing and he's playing well they say he's back about 98 percent of where he was before just sheer hard work Williams back to throw he has a gun for an arm and completes it to Kenneth Brown at the sideline let's go to Larry Burnett for a scoreboard update all right, here we go. SMU leading Baylor by the score of 24 to 14. That one is in the third. Clemson, a winner over Virginia tonight. That's the final 31-17. Also a final, Florida State wins big over Tulane. And Washington knocks off Stanford. The first loss for Stanford this year, 24-14. That's the final. Pac-10's been a lot tougher than uh, anybody thought this year. The Cardinal loses for the first time. It's a first and 10 for Oklahoma State. Williams, who had... Uh, the greatest day of his career last year against Nebraska, 363 yards. Throws sideline for Hartley Dykes, and he is driven out of bounds. Great coverage there by Charlie Fryer, who buried him. Well, they've had quite a battle. Lee Dykes, again, has six inches on him. He's a lot bigger, but Fryer's playing him tough. He'll be on the upper part of your screen. This ball should have been caught. He delivered it. I mean, he's rolling left. He threw that ball about 30 yards on the line. And as you said, Mike, he set records last year. The Friars playing him tough. He's a big, you know, when you're smaller, sometimes you're a little feistier. And he came into this game psyched up that he could handle Lee Dykes. And so far, he's done an excellent job. Couldn't ask for any more courage out of Williams either. Last year, he suffered a broken jaw, came back in four weeks and played again. And you just don't do that. That's what we were going to say. He did set two school records last year. He had 27 completions for 363, like you said, last year. Threw for 1,800 yards last year with that broken jaw plate. Eight weeks. A couple of those weeks, he had his jaw wired shut, so he was very tough. And they were expecting big things out of him this season. The problem is he came in the first couple games, had a couple uh, picked off for touchdowns, fumbled twice where they scored touchdowns. Yeah. And so they went with the pressure. Tough to call signals with your jaws wired shut. Everything sounds the same. Williams guns it over the middle and incomplete throwing for Dykes. Dropping off the line of scrimmage with Jeff Jamrock, number 80, who was playing in front of him. Very good when you can drop your defensive end back, back 30 yards into the secondary. That's right. Double team the receivers. And that's Kerry Cooper who will have to come on and punt it away. That average a little deceptive. They have been low and returnable. And they'll send Brinson 33 and Smith 88 back to receive. Another short kick, and this one will bounce sideways and out of bounds at the Nebraska 41-yard line. Those kicks are with the wind, and that one was 33 yards. Not what Kerry Cooper would have wanted to get out of that. 
ESPN's live presentation of CFA football will continue next Saturday when Texas plays host to Arkansas. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern. That'll be 4 p.m. Pacific when Larry Burnett and Bino Cook host the Mercury College Football Scoreboard Show. Steve Taylor back at quarterback. You know, he broke uh, most of Marcus, Marcus Allen's records in high school. He averaged 11 yards a carry. Broke his total yard in offensive records. 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Moore is in on defense. And they'll run Hyba up the middle. A little surprised to see Moore, even though he's an All-American, come back into the ball game. Well, it was a smart move by Pat Jones, though. He wanted to cool those guys down. Yeah. They were a little hot, and that's a classy move as a coach. Took them out the last series. You can't afford to keep guys like that on the bench, though. He's just too good a player. Moore's back at the free safety spot. And whistles will stop play this time. And that's the end of the third quarter. Our score with 15 minutes of football still to come from Lincoln. Nebraska 30, Oklahoma State 10. Well, there's a score. Nebraska up 30 to 10. If they can put this ball in. They can uh, they can put Oklahoma State away. This is a big drive for them right here. It's second and eight, Nebraska. Give it to the tailback and for the or rather to the wingback rather for the first time tonight they've shut down Dana Brinson. Mark Moore is now Mark. Let's see. They're going to block him every time they got a chance. Nebraska is not happy with what they did to Steve Taylor and to Blakeman. And they're going to pay him back every chance they have. That's the problem when you make those late hits. And that was Willie Griffin, the backup tight end, who is 260. Third and now 10. Taylor remains at quarterback. Brinson goes in motion. Play action and they want to throw. Taylor under pressure. Throws, tipped, and incomplete. So is Mark Moore again, dropping back, playing safety now. Come up and he's going to make this play. He's going to show why he is an All-America player. Oh. Intended for Henley Hawkins. Tough throw across his body, but this ball should have been grabbed. A little uh, late hit there, too. Oklahoma State's uh, only hit late tonight. Nebraska, Croker will punt it with the win and really sails one. Fair catch, fumble. And Oklahoma State will get it back inside its 15-yard line. That was Bobby Riley who couldn't hold the 43-yard kick. Nebraska by 20. Oh. Right. 14 minutes and four seconds left to go in this ball game from Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Huskers lead it 30 to 10. Oklahoma State with the football. And absolutely nothing on offense. That's been the story the entire second half. The Cowboys have gained nine yards in the second half. That's nine. That's also unbelievable. <laughs> they need Jerry Decker to. Uh, he's been their best offensive player this That's right. <laughs> tonight. And Nebraska continues to roll, of course, on offense and has really shut down Oklahoma State, which did a great job on offense in the first half. Second and nine right now. Williams is in at quarterback. He's got a rifle for an arm, and he's going to need it. Throwing deep into the wind for Hartley Dykes, and Dykes goes down and once again says something the official wanted an interference call, but he stumbled on that. Good coverage, too. Well, it's awful tough coming in as a quarterback when you're down by 20 points in the fourth quarter. No matter how strong your arm is, and he was rolling to left, and he delivered this a long way, it's tough to throw into a triple coverage like this into a zone. Lee Dykes just falls down. It's not a penalty. But one of the problems, Mike, that Oklahoma State has had this year is their quarterbacks, Gundy and Williams, have a net of a minus 55 yards rushing. That's right. And, uh, you know, they're not able to run the ball. It's awfully tough to just stand back and throw all night. Third down, nine yards to go. 
Williams rifles it over the middle. That's Dillard, his big tight end, and Dillard is out to the 39. And big, Dillard listed at 255. Uh, Pat Jones told me yesterday uh, he's down to about 245, a smelt 245. Pat Jones talking to his uh, coaches on the sideline after a 24 yard game. Oh, he just absolutely whistled this ball. Rolls to his right and just nails it to his tight end. Got the big body, nice hands to catch this ball. That's and a good then catch. It's no fun tackling someone 255 yards, or 255 pounds. He's awful tough to bring down. Roderick Thomas dropped off from the end spot to make the tackle. It's first and 10, Oklahoma State, their own 40-yard line. They're down by 20 points. They need all the pass completions they can get. Williams this time overthrows Brian Keith, the other tight end, who is uh, hardly diminutive himself at 235. Well, part of the problems with uh, Williams really, as you said, he throws such a hard ball that the receivers, the receivers have a lot of trouble coming down with it. Dillard made a great catch there. He's got to learn a little bit of touch, particularly on those 10 to 15 yard patterns. Uh, you know, receivers aren't going to come down with them all the time, particularly when it's cold like tonight. You know, you take a look in the record book and all the guys Nebraska has, the people's records they have broken in high school. I know we'll get into that in a second. You've got some stuff on that. And into the ball game for the first time to carry Mitch Nash, number 22, who's a good running back. Mark Munford made the tackle. You, know, you go back to, to Nebraska, players who break high school records, they don't break anybody's records. They break they break the greats' records. Well, they had, uh, as we said earlier, Steve Taylor broke Marcus Allen's records, and their eye back, Keith Jones, broke some of Gail Sayers' records. And those are two pretty big <laughs> names. Yeah. Not bad for running backs. Rushing total. Oklahoma State with 58. They had 55, I believe, in the first half. Williams wants to throw. Got it out there again to his tight end, down to the 41-yard line, and Dillard has good hands. Jeff Jamrog made the tackle. Dillard uh, really a load when he gets in the secondary. Well, Nebraska's up by 20, but Danny Noonan's not gonna stop coming at him right there in the middle. 95, they're double-teaming him. He faces it all night long, and he will not quit. He almost makes a sack here. He never quits, and that's why he's got a good shot to be All-American. A heck of a player, 286-4, runs a 4-7-40. Williams now three out of seven, 50 yards. He has a first down at the Nebraska 41. Play fake. Williams in trouble. Got out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Chased out by Jamrod. As Tom Osborne going with his second unit defense, especially on the line, they probably have more lettermen year in and year out at Nebraska than most people have getting the ball game. They got a 60-65 lettermen a season. I didn't meet that many people on the heart of the football teams <laughs> in four years. It really is uh, amazing, and that's why they perpetuate the power. They have so that's many right. backups that step right in their experience, and they keep right on winning. Second and five. OSU at the Nebraska 35. Williams wanted to throw the quick pass and now goes deep for Hartley Dykes. He's got it and dropped it. Oh. Hartley Dykes bobbled that thing for about five yards and look at the reaction of Ronnie Williams. He laid that one right there. Well, this is a this is a really strange call or play. Hartley Dykes is going to run. He's at the bottom. He'll come into your picture. He's just going to run a fly pattern. But what's really odd about this play is number 11, Jeff Tomjack, is going to come up and he just overruns the ball to safety. Lee Dykes has it right in his hands and drops it. Kind of second half it has been for Oklahoma State, and Williams is more disappointed than Hart Lee Dykes was. Third and five, Cowboys. They've got to score every time they get their hands on the ball. They're down by 20. They'll throw this time inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line, and he's got Kenneth Brown. Should be good enough for a first down. Brown broke away, but late. Charlie Fryer on the stop for Nebraska. Boy, Williams throws those short passes so hard. Oh, this is a bullet. And there is a face mask that he's going to get away with. There's, those are awfully tough on those types. But what I like about Williams' the last two plays is he delivered that ball, the bullet strike on the, and the other play, well, the play that uh, Lee Dykes dropped that ball. It's a nice touch. He lobbed that ball. He's got to mix it up like that. Williams throws short. If you don't catch it, it's like, likely to stick to you. <laughs> the tailback is Mitch Nash, number 22. They're taking Thomas out of there. 
Now Williams again and just gunned this one over the head of Kenneth Brown. He airmailed that one. If you don't see him, at least you can hear him going by. Well, it's got to be awfully tough for him. You know, he came into this season as the incumbent starter and put up some good numbers last year and then to get beat out by a, a kid they really wanted to redshirt. Yeah. Gundy they didn't expect to play this year and Pat Jones had to make the move and it's uh, I'm glad Ronnie Williams didn't quit because you never know. You come back and still have a good year this year and play out a senior year next year. Pat Jones said yesterday that uh, he's taken it really well. He wasn't happy about it, but he's taken it like a man. And dropped by Riley. As Williams put it out there, and Riley just couldn't hold it, dropping back on defense. Broderick Thomas, 89, but Riley was open. You know, the coaches told us that Ronnie Williams has an incredible arm, and you really can't see it on the television that well, but we're up here like uh, 85 stories high, and he releases yep. that ball, and it gets there in a second. Four out of 11 so far, 57 yards for the junior out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Our producer, John Wildhack, just asked if we were afraid of heights. No, John, we're afraid of cold. <laughs> it's high and cold up here. Williams blitz. And they got him sacked by Mark Munford. And the crowd loves it when Munford does something really behind this young man. Mark Munford, two-time all big eight, number 41. He's going to blitz here and make the play. It's great to see someone come back as he has, not only the knee injury, then he almost died from kidney problems. I mean, they really worried about losing him. This year, he's had back spasms and ankle problems. And Mumford is happy that he came back and played this year. And after all that, still a great player. Cooper will now punt on fourth and 20. Punting into a strong win, hangs it high, and the wind just kills it. They'll let it go, and it will take an Oklahoma State bounce and die at the six-yard line. 10-21 to go in the ball game. We'll be back in Lincoln, Nebraska, right after this. They did. League Cup champion Montreal Canadiens clash with the talented Buffalo Sabres live Wednesday night at 7:30 Eastern on ESPN. Well, there's two guys that must go to Pat McAnally's barber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think. I don't. You think they're natural redheads or yeah. they're natural blondes? Well, their ears are warm. I know that. Nebraska will start from its own six, leading 30 to 10. Micah Heibel will pull back up to about the nine yard line. Steve Taylor remains in there, quarterback. Another example of uh, the depth they have at, at Nebraska. You know, Taylor is the starting quarterback, of course. Cleet Blakeman is the backup in McCathorn Clayton. Had a great game last year, 8 for 16 for 161 yards, a touchdown, ran for a couple touchdowns against Oklahoma State. He was a starter 10 out of 12 games, and this is Shaw, the young man who was coming off uh, a dislocated shoulder two weeks ago and has shown an awful lot of courage to be out there. You see uh, his left arm, he's wearing some kind of a sling device to try to protect that left shoulder, and a dislocation is an extremely painful injury. He's their only returning starter. Hope he's going to be all right. He's been their big play man, came into this game with 10 tackles behind the line of scrimmage, three sacks, and seven other tackles for loss. Now, those are, that's a lot of big plays in four games. One thing I'm sure he's proud of, uh, I was looking in the press guide, and, you know, he was all state as a sports writer in high school in North Carolina. He made the journalism All-State team, which is quite a combination as a player. He was All-State player and All-State writer. Yeah, he's from out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And he's up and coming off the field uh, in some obvious pain is Ricky Shaw. Going to be second and seven for Nebraska. The clock shows 10 minutes and eight seconds to go in this ball game. Oklahoma State was within one yard of tying this game up in the second quarter. Could not score after first and goal at the one. Now they're down by 20 points. They'll give it to Heibel, and Heibel is nailed by number 92, Robert Nunn. Let's go down to Tim Brando at the sideline. Tim? Right now, a very popular place for all of the uh, 
Nebraska fans is going to be a homecoming dance now for Oklahoma State. This is a very popular place. It's the heater 85,000 BTU heater. Now I've been invited to the homecoming dance. I may have to use this as a hair blower though to, to get my hair back in gear for the uh, dances afterwards. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I always hung around those things. I had a permanent spot on the sidelines. Really into hair here in the fourth quarter. Third and six, Nebraska. Play action. Turner has to keep it forced out of bounds. That's Jackson again with another good play. Big defensive night for Leonard Jackson. You'd have a heck of a time trying to put that in your suitcase, though, Kerry. <laughs> Overnight <laughs> case is your hair dryer. <laughs> Turner goes to the sideline, and Nebraska will have to punt it away with 9 away to go. You know, I actually melted uh, the tops of my shoes a couple times when I, I put my foot right inside those things. Rubber doesn't smell real well, so no one would hang around me, and I'd have my own spot all by myself. They didn't have a, uh, a course in uh, sideline heaters at Harvard, right? <laughs> no. Hey, I got to say something about this punter, John Kroger. He was Nebraska Athlete of the Year last year he lettered four years in three different sports and in those three sports basketball track and football his teams won state titles in each pretty impressive not bad and you would think if he had gone somewhere else uh, he would have played a couple of different positions as they went for the block beautiful and there will be a fair catch at the 50 yard line taken by Sanders but if you're the player of the year in the state of Nebraska you go to Nebraska nine minutes to go we've got a timeout and by Allstate, we insure your home, your car, your health, your business, and your life. You're in good hands with Allstate. And it's 30 to 10. Oklahoma State with the football. Williams running the offense. Thurman Thomas is back in there for pass protection. Williams going long. Intercept, Beautiful play. picked off by Mark Blazek, who came from nowhere to pick it off. Looking at the secondary, Nebraska blitzed on this play, but what they did was they played man-to-man -man outside, they kept their free safety as a center fielder, and he comes over and makes this play a cut right in front of it, and helps out Fryer. Oh. That's what you want. You want a safety that's going to cover the field like that and take the ball away. Again, though, Fryer was all over him. What a play from Mark Blazek and Fryer. You're right. He had great coverage man to man, so Nebraska has the football back at their own 22. Turner on the option. He'll keep it, be chased out of bounds. Got ball to about the 30 yard line. Running out of bounds. 30 yard line. Nebraska approaching what it uh, normally does in football games and it's the mark of consistency the Huskers averaging 327 and a half yards rushing and giving up only 54.3 that is incredible defense tonight they have allowed uh, only three tenths short of their average they've gained 267 and with uh, 848 to go in the ball game they may hit their average in this one they're also averaging 42 points a game this is Ibel. Micah Heibel, the big fullback, rambles to the 41-yard line. Finally stopped by strong safety Mike Hudson. Just going to break it right up the middle. Quick breaker right here. Give it to the up man instead of the tailback. And he'll just run it. I guess he's getting kind of confident here. He went around. Most fullbacks will take that ball and go right north and south. Well, when you only have two linebackers, your backers have to make the right decisions. And they were just taken out of that play. They are both freshmen. Heibel now with 73 yards rushing on the night. Quite a performance for the homegrown product out of Lincoln. He is the up man in the eye right now. He'll get it again. Nothing this time and the tackle made by Leonard Jackson. who has been a stalwart on defense in the middle of that Oklahoma State defensive line. 84 tackling 48. Clock is running just inside the eight minute mark. They've sold out this stadium 146 straight times. And you got to love your football to show up when it's under 40 degrees, 30 mile an hour wind, rain and sleet. You got to love the state to come back for homecoming. You bet. Weather. You wear your homecoming finest and sit out there and freeze to death. 
Second nine, they'll give it to Rodgers. And Rodgers lost the football. They'll say it's down, though, at the 40-yard line. Good defensive play by Robert Nunn, who's in there at a linebacker spot now. It's the second big play Nunn has made in the Nebraska backfield. Again, that penetration. Now, one thing is Terry Rodgers has been fumbling the ball. Now, he's down on this play, but he's got to start hanging on to the ball. These guys are a lot bigger than... Now, that was very close. But that's an adjustment a high school player has to make. The people that are hitting him not only are bigger physically, but they're stronger with their hands, and they can strip you of the ball. They're taught to do that. Third and 11. For Nebraska, they're more concerned about the clock than they are anything else. All they have to do is wind it down. Taylor, all day to throw over the middle, and it's complete. He had Rod Smith, the young man who returned the punt return for a touchdown earlier in the ball game. Very close to first down yardage. And where they'll mark it, it looks like Nebraska will have a first down at the Oklahoma State 48. Let's just drop back, play action. Smith's going to run the hook. He did this earlier in the uh, game. Just a nice throw by Taylor, right? Just beats the zone. That's it's awfully difficult. It puts a lot of pressure on your defensive backs and your linebackers when you have to stop that running game. You can run that hook right behind the backers because they don't get enough drop. Melvin Gillum, number two, made the tackle. He may be the best athlete out there. He's a letterman as a freshman last year on both the football and basketball teams for Oklahoma State. Here's the toss to the new eye back, Jeff Wheeler, number 25, 175 pound sophomore. As Tom Osborne goes deeper and deeper into his uh, death chart. Not going to be able to accuse Tom Osborne of trying to run it up. Well, yeah, you see those scores from Nebraska, 63 to 7, 54, 14, and they really don't run it up intentionally. They just have players that are such yeah. quality players. They come in, they play well. And now Blakeman has come on to play quarterback. Fleet was on earlier, scored one touchdown. Second and 12 for Nebraska. Heibel stays in at fullback. This is Wheeler. Hesitated, had a hole. And then to shut down as he got to the 46, David Bailey again on the tackle. Now we mentioned the, earlier that Ken Kalen, the starting fullback, was hurt. So Micah Heibel came in. And you think, well, here's a second string fullback. Well, he was a high school All-America. He was Nebraska Defensive Player of the Year in high school. Not only that, he was math major, and he played the trombone in the concert in the jazz bands. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a backup that's an All-American high school. That's right. Now, Nebraska has the one advantage, the only state school, and they get them all, or virtually all. Blakeman runs the option, keeps the ball caught from behind. He gets to the Oklahoma State 40. He'll be two yards shy of the first down. Pulled down by Kenneth Cumby, number 30. Got a handful of jersey. Well, I talked to Tom Osborne last night. He called me, and uh, we were talking, and he said, I said, well, what are you going to do as far as the running game goes? He goes, well, Pat, we have more running plays than I could ever tell you in a week. And it's true, they use so many uh, formations. They run fake reverses like that. They ran a fake reverse option. He kept the ball. Nebraska on fourth and two is going to punt it away. Four minutes, 36 seconds to go. And Croker, with a 30 mile an hour wind in his back, will kick from the 40 yard line. Sanders deep to receive. Croker tries to float it up the wind. Knocks it down to the five yard line, takes the bounce. Nebraska trying to save it. Yes. And they did. What a great play. Now they'll move it back to the five. Oh, outstanding play by two of them. They each saved it. And not a bad punt by Croker. Now this is classic Nebraska. Look at how many guys they have down here. They're not going to quit. They're up by 20 points. One man saves it, and the second man saves it. And then the smart play. Now they'll knock it out. That was yep. a great play. Back to the five-yard line. No return yardage at all for Oklahoma State on four punts. We have a timeout. Stay with us. <laughs> Oklahoma State will have the ball first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. They've gotten a first down. We missed two plays. Apparently, the officials decided to... Uh, the commercial break was not nearly as important as getting out of here and finding a warm place to sit down. <laughs> so we had to break it. They said, oh, come on. Keep the clock running and let's play. Williams looks near sideline and overthrows Riley. The officials make uh, correct decisions sometimes, don't they? Yeah, I think that was a beauty. 
LSU has beaten Georgia, we're told, the final 23-14. And our game coming up next Saturday night, Arkansas, Texas from Austin. Hope Razorbacks uh, will make uh, the trip down there. It's nicer in Texas. Couldn't be much colder. Second down and 10 for the Cowboys. We really played a fine game tonight. Acquitted themselves well. Had a chance to tie it up in the second quarter. Dillard couldn't hold that one. Tried to make the one-hand catch. Let's go to Tim Brando at the sideline. Tim? Nebraska fans come from everywhere. Ollie Shadler and Dick Beveridge came all the way from Orange County, California. Now, how many times would you do this, Ollie, during the course of the year? Oh, we'll be here two games this year. This one and the next one, that'll be the Missouri game. Yeah. And uh, that'll be it for this year. And next year, we'll probably try to make two or three. Dick, let's let's. How many guys and and ladies made it in from Orange County? I believe it's 169 on this trip. One of the biggest we've ever had, Jim. Now, it's, it's tremendous. Tim's the name. Can I oh, have Tim. your cap? Oh, yeah, you can. All right. You don't know my name, but he's going to give me his hat. All right. <laughs> Williams going bombs away for Riley. Riley got away with a push, and now the official's going to throw the flag. Riley pushed Cleo Miller, who was right in his face on defense. They're calling face guarding on that, I think. He really wasn't going for the ball. You can't wave your hands in front of the receiver. Well, the official caught the second infraction then. Boy, he threw this a long way into the wind. And 17, you'll see Cleo Miller. He's going to start waving his arms here. He's not really going for the ball. He's just distracting the receiver, and that is a penalty. You don't always have to make contact to uh, break a rule. Tim Brando has more on the sideline. Tim? One more question, Dick. Now, you got 169 people from California. Yes, it's sir. very cold here. And you gave up some tickets at UCLA for this game, right? I did indeed. It was a great game today, and our Bruins won, and my daughter was there watching it. She rooted us home, but I love the Huskers. Now, how many of those 169 are still weathering the weather? Uh, probably 168. I think somebody left early, some traitor. <laughs> <laughs> They, all, they call them in all sizes and shapes and from all parts of the nation. All right, thank you, Tim. You get a chance to work on your tan much in Lincoln this weekend. First and 10, Williams on the draw to Sanders, who's a terrific little running back who gained 132 yards last week when he was alternating with Thurman Thomas. Parsons makes the tackle. Well, you got to love your Cornhuskers to leave the warmth of California and show up here. you got to buy all new clothes, right? These Californians are tough, though. Of course, there's one thing that's in big supply here is red clothing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sure they've sold a lot of parkas and uh, sweatshirts tonight. Second and 10, OSU. Williams with a rifle that bounces in front of Hartley Dykes. Got another big program here in Nebraska, and that is their walk-on program, and they get a ton of people that show up that they don't give scholarships to. And right. look at some of the names. Yeah, there's a couple starters there, a couple prominent backup guys, 13 people they have as walk-ons, and that should give hope to a lot of kids aren't recruited. They don't get uh, get an opportunity for a scholarship, and that doesn't mean they have to quit. They come to a program like Nebraska's, and they make the team, and some of them start. And then they get scholarships. You make the first, second team, uh, you're put on scholarship. And it's a great reward for these kids, and it, it's great for the Nebraska football program. You get some talented people outside of the scholarship limit. Third and 10. Pressure, and they got Williams. Number 96, Lawrence Pete, the backup nose guard, and 280 pounds, comes through to get the sack on Ronnie Williams. Well, they showed good speed on that play. He's 280 pounds. He's the strongest player to ever perform for Nebraska. He uh, bench presses 500 pounds, and he can run. Well, he bench pressed a 215-pound quarterback that time. Brinson is deep to receive. That's the third sack of the night for the Cornhuskers. Cooper will have to punt into the wind this time. Hangs it up there. Brinson trapped and dropped at the 35. So with a minute and 38 seconds to go following a 36 punt, we have Nebraska up by 20. There's the story. We're down to a minute 38, and Nebraska has salted away another victory. They will go to 5-0, ranked fifth in the ESPN National Poll this week. Certainly is not going to hurt their chances at all.
new quarterback in there right now, McCathorn Clayton, who was the starter a year ago. Well, this shows you, as the players come to Nebraska, they gain weight, they get stronger, and they actually increase their 40, you know, they get faster and they get stronger. And that's a combination. A good weight program not only makes you bigger, makes you faster. Clayton calling signals, gives off to Tyrese Knox, the backup fullback. I want to thank our spotter, Ben Boyle, tonight. And our statistician, as always, is Chuck Freeby. And we really want to thank our camera guys who have been out there freezing it tonight. Kim Elston, Mike Miller, Bill Moore, Tony Marshall, Chris Raycock, John Woodhead, and Silvio Garcia. And they have really done a great job for us. Brought you some tremendous pictures tonight. Also want to mention uh, the people who have worked in uh, Videotape, John Lulford, Keith Bozart, I'm sorry, John Lunsford, Jay Morrow, and in audio, Bill Williams and Milt Dooley, our technical director, Jimmy Moore. We've already talked about our uh, producer, of course, John Wildhack, and our director, Mark Payton, who is in mourning over his Astros. <laughs> Down to 20 seconds left to go. Nebraska salting it away 30 to 10 as Clayton carried on that play. Nebraska's got a chance at the national championship, and of course, around here, almost everything they do leads up to that November 22nd. They play Oklahoma. You know, it's, it seems unbelievable, but Nebraska may be sneaking their way to a national title. If they get past Oklahoma and they play Miami in the Orange Bowl, they can walk away with a crown. They got a shot. That's the end of the ball game, and Pat Jones will go across to the middle of the field to meet Tom Osborne. Our final score here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska 30. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who made it a close game in the first half, 10. Of the Sears Financial Network. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Our final score, Nebraska 30 to 10 over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. I'm joined now by Coach Tom Osborne. Coach, you expected a tough game. You got one, particularly in the first half. Yeah, they played us uh, pretty tough, and we had a lot of people knocked out. Keith Jones, our starting eye back, was knocked dizzy, he couldn't play, and uh, Steve Taylor was hurting a little bit, and so we were a little bit we were scrambling as far as people we could put in there in the second half. Didn't hang on the ball very good. Considering the fact that you've lost as many backs as you have, it's amazing that this team is unscathed at this point. Well, we're not unscathed, but we're, <laughs> we're hanging in there. We need to get some people back. Our starting fullback may be back next week, and we hope Keith Jones will be all right. Coach, one final thing. I got the impression that early in the third quarter, with all of the difficulty with the late hits, it inspired your team, particularly on the defensive side, and that dictated the tempo the rest uh, of the way. It inspired us a little bit, but also got a couple of players knocked out that we needed to have in there. Tom, congratulations okay. on the victory. Thank you. Tom Osborne, the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, his team perhaps on its way to a national title possibility. Let's go back now to Mike and Pat. Thank you very much, Tim Brando, and our thanks to uh, Coach Tom Osborne and Pat Jones, who helped us get ready for this ball game. Our player of the game, Jerry Deckard, defensive end number 47 out of Nacogdoches, Texas, for Oklahoma State University. It was his play that kept it close in the first half. Two interceptions tonight. That one, he ran back for a 45-yard touchdown. He also forced a fumble that was recovered by Oklahoma State. Our congratulations to the junior from Oklahoma State. We'll be back to wrap it up from Lincoln, Nebraska, where Nebraska celebrated homecoming by beating Oklahoma State right after this. Once again, tonight's final score, Nebraska 30, Oklahoma State 10. Coming up next, the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report with Larry and Bino. ESPN's live presentation of Thursday Night College Football continues October 15th with Jerry Faust and the Akron Zips against Murray State. And next Saturday, join Pat, Tim, and me for live CFA action when Texas hosts Arkansas. Cleet Blakeman, the backup quarterback for Nebraska, getting the touchdown that broke it open as he came in for Steve Taylor, who was shaken up. And Steve Jones, the starting eye back, the fastest player in Nebraska history, with one of his touchdown runs. 
For Tim and Pat, this is Mike Patrick saying goodnight from Lincoln. Let's join the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report.